Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So today we are gonna see, what if Madara helps Naruto to becomes most powerful ninja of history. Part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description. So let's begin the story. A man wearing a white mask with black lines on it and a black cloak, was walking towards an exit of a cave he was currently in. The Bido kun be sure to remember to bring a newborn Ichiha back with you, after you finish capturing my pet the man now known as Abito turned around to face his dying sensei, Madara Ichiha. Madara was getting older and nearer to death, he wore a completely black garb. Hi, Madara sensei with it the masked man took off towards his destination, the village hidden in the leaves. Twelve hours later. The same masked man appeared in front of Madara in a vortex. Madara's eyes snapped open, he took a look at his apprentice, Abito's mask was almost broken, and his cloak ripped and torn, he saw him holding a bundle in his hand. Where is Kaiubi? questioned Madara. He saw his student look down in disappointment. The fourth Hokage was too strong for me, Kishina Yuzumaki stabilized the Kaiubi by using her chakra chains, and Minato sealed the Kaiubi's yin chakra and yang chakra inside his two baby girls, he then sealed the Kaiubi's soul and elemental chakra inside of his baby boy. But I did manage to get this boy, his parents died trying to protect him from the Kaiubi's tailed beast bomb. On a crib inside the broken house the name Naruto was written on it, so I think this boy's name is Naruto. He is Ichiha.Abito hoped that the last part of his explanation would please Madara. After moments of quietness Madara spoke up give me the boy.Abito handed Naruto over without a moment of hesitation. Naruto yawned and rubbed his eyes open, he looked at Madara's eyes and blinked. After moments of an intense stare down between Naruto and Madara, Naruto started crying and wailing. Madara looked at Abito and said handle the boy for now and give me him when he has grown. Sensei I can't watch this brat, I have things that I need to prepare for your plan Abito complained. Madara sighed as he knew his student was correct. Madara estimated that he has about roughly nine years until his death. Bring me some food and other things babies need, and I will try to take care of him. If you see Zetsu by any chance tell him that I need his assistance for some spying that I need to be done Madara ordered. Ten years later. In a dim cave room there were three people, two of which were surrounding the eldest member of the three. The Bido has not changed much except his attire, he was wearing a closed cloak that was completely black, but had red clouds floating on it, and his broken mask has been replaced with a new mask, that has orange swirls leading to one circle, that allowed him to see out of one of his eyes. Ladara hasn't changed but is in a worse condition than he was before the ten years that have passed. Now Naruto is the one that changed, instead of the little baby they found now standing at 5-5 five five feet with gravity-defying black hair with black and silver-like eyes was Naruto Ichiha. Naruto was wearing a white cloak, underneath he was wearing nothing but Anbu-style white colored pants. Madara started to violently cough up blood, he looked up to both his apprentices I guess age has finally caught up to me he, paused to cough Abito continue with the plans I told you of, and Naruto help out whenever Abito calls you Madara finished the last part, while looking at his younger student who nodded. Remember what I have taught you guys each word left Madara's mouth slower than the ones before it, and with the last word Madara died. Naruto closed his eyes and hummed to himself, while Libido called out for Zetsu, who promised to preserve Madara's body. Libido stared at Naruto's downcast look for a moment giving the boy a moment to grieve for the death of his sensei, after a while he thought that it was long enough Naruto that is enough, come with me we must go and meet up with the other Akatsuki members ordered Ibido. Naruto slowly looked up to the taller man I do what I want Ibido and, with that Naruto started to walk away from the nameless cave location that they were currently at. I don't have time for this Abito thought as he brought his hand up to force Naruto to listen to him through pain, just as Naruto was almost at the exit the butt end of a sword smacked him in the back, and he burst in a puff of ravens. The clone. Damn the brat got me this time Abito turned his head to the ceiling in the room, and spoke Zetsu find Naruto for me, and when you do keep tabs on him, if he is doing anything that can be seen as a threat to Akatsuki then report to me him location, and I will quickly dispose of him Abito knew that Naruto was different from him and Madara. He didn't have the same bond that Madara had with the boy, so with Madara dead now there would be no reason for Naruto to stay. Naruto sighed and gripped his backpack tighter when his clone's memories came at him. What's your next step now? Questioned a deep voice in the back of Naruto's head, the voice belonged to a man named Asura. Before Naruto responded to the man he recollected the memory of how he met this man. Flashback. A six-year-old Naruto was climbing a waterfall with Madara and Ibido watching him at the top of the waterfall. So far so good was the thoughts of Naruto when he saw how close he was to the top. Naruto moved his feet to make another step forward when a falling object in the water was sent towards him. Should I was so busy watching my feet that I didn't look where I was going he exclaimed, as the rock smacked his feet which made him lose focus and stop channeling chakra towards his feet. 
When Abido saw Naruto falling from the very large waterfall he was about to jump down and save him, but Madara held out his hand which made Abido stop and look at Madara's serious complexion. Let him find a way to save himself, it will only make him stronger if he can survive this fall Madara explained in a calm-like fashion, Abido nodded his head in understanding. They then looked down to see what would happen. Naruto had a panicked expression when he saw how close the jagged rocks on the bottom of the waterfall was getting. He realized that he wasn't getting saved by the other Ichihas, because if they were then they would have been done, when that realization came to him, Naruto felt his vision sharpen, and he could see the ground coming to him slower. Tiled, use that that you enjoy so much, the one that creates wind waves. A voice said in Naruto's head. Naruto immediately realized that the voice was right and immediately started forming hand seals wind release. Great breakthrough the amount of chakra Naruto poured into the was almost his capacity, but the effects of the was immediate, and Naruto was flung back up to where he came from at a fast rate. He went a little higher than the waterfall in the air, so when he landed it was still kinda painful. Madara looked at Naruto and smirked when he saw the new eyes his student achieved good work Naruto you saved yourself, and now you have a new source of power as a reward, go rest up we will continue your training, tomorrow. Naruto glared at Madara when he saw the smirk, but he felt pride running through him from hearing that he finally unlocked the Sharingan. That night Naruto laid on the hard rock floor of the room he slept in. You still there? He questioned the voice that he heard earlier. After an intense five minutes of waiting Naruto felt a tug in his head, he went with a flow and appeared in a dark forest with thunder and lightning raging above it. Naruto recognized this place as his mind, Madara thought it was a good idea for every Ichiha to be able to control his own thoughts, so he made Naruto go through tons of mediation activities. Follow the voice Naruto shrugged. If it was an enemy he would not have saved him earlier, so he listened to the voice. Naruto ended up inside of a cave with a man sitting in an Indian-style position on the floor, the man had his eyes closed, he had short, spiky brown hair, two locks of which were wrapped in bandages framing either side of his face, and also had stern facial features. He also wore bandages around his forehead. He wore a light-colored kimono which was adorned with magatama around the collar. The kimono was held closed by a dark-colored sash. Naruto's eyebrows rose at the sight of the man and your Naruto questioned him. The man opened his eyes and revealed dark eyes his mouth moved to speak my name is Asura Atsutsuki, grandson of Kagaya Atsutsuki, son of Hagoromo Atsutsuki and brother of Indra Atsutsuki, may I ask what your name is Naruto? Was shocked at the man standing before him, being a student of a man who respected intellect he was forced to study history and know things about his ancestors, this man in front of him was the Asura Atsutsuki, the brother of Indra Atsutsuki the Ichiha's ancestors. My name is Naruto. Ichiha Naruto saw that the man didn't show any sign of being surprised after hearing that he was Ichiha, so he continued speaking May, I ask what are you doing here? I'm Ichiha, shouldn't you be talking to a senju or Uzumaki? Naruto was caught off guard when he saw the man began chuckling Naruto, I wouldn't be here if you were not a descendant of a senju, have you ever wondered who your parents were Asura? Saw Naruto slowly nod and continued speaking well, I don't know anything about the mother, then the fact that your mother's dad was Izuna Chiha, and your father's dad was Hashirama Senju Asura, paused to let all the info sink into Naruto's mind, before he continued Hashirama was away when Mito Uzumaki his wife had your father. While she was resting someone in the darkness took your father and placed him in an orphanage for children who lost their parents in the war, you might be wondering how I know all this, well over the years after my death, I have been able to talk to my brothers the Biju through their minds, until I found my next descendant. Iwubi who is named Kurama, was currently sealed inside Mito at that time, so I saw the events that took place, the person that took your father was dressed from head to toe, so I do not know who did it. Naruto thought over Asura's explanation. Damn I wish that I got to meet my parents, the only thing Abido said was that he saw me in their dead hands the night of their Kaiubi attack, it's a good thing that he left their bodies there they probably got the right burial, they deserve. Naruto. Smiled at the thought of his parents, he wondered what type of people they were, his dad was probably easygoing and energetic, and his mom was probably strict but loving. Why choose Metho Naruto questioned with a serious expression. Asura actually smiled at the question well who wouldn't take the chance to train and watch over a half senju, and half Ichiha bratty chuckled when he watched Naruto get angry at the brat. His expression hardened after a moment Naruto you have to promise me something Naruto looked at Tura in the eyes you have to promise me that you will try to make a friendship or peace with my brothers descendant Asura said with a serious expression. Well whoever Indra's descendant is, if I can tolerate them then I will allow them to work with me. Asura took that as a yes. Well then, what are you waiting for to leave and get a good night rest, tomorrow I want you to complete that water climbing exercise, you will do it until you are able to walk on water without thinking. Asura told him. Naruto left his mind. Naruto looked up at the ceiling of the cave wow. I can't believe Madara is my great uncle, a voice in Naruto's head chuckled. End of flashback. Naruto smiled at the memory, then frowned. 
he is already starting to miss his uncle Madara. I guess I'm going to go wherever the wind takes me Naruto smirked at the grunt of his ancestor Asura. It's ironic how this night is the beginning of Naruto Uchiha, and this night is your birthday Asura smirked when he saw Naruto almost double over it forgetting that tonight was his own birthday, and he forgot. Thanks for reminding me, even though there isn't any cake waiting for me Naruto sighed, his birthday wasn't that big of a deal, when Madara was alive each birthday Naruto had he would learn a new one. I guess my birthday present this year is a dead Madara Naruto chuckled dryly at his own joke. Asura took this as a moment to speak up cheer up, maybe this birthday you can do something for me. It will be an adventure you will enjoy it quite much. Naruto stopped walking at the thought of an adventure. And what would that be? Questioned Naruto. Asura didn't speak up for a moment when Naruto was about to ask again, he spoke up I'm sure you heard that some members of the Senju clan created the Uzumaki clan that made a home near the land of waves called the village hidden by whirling tides. Well I would like to check out my Uzumaki children's village even if it is destroyed. Naruto respected Asura for being a family man. Alright, let's go. Naruto exclaimed as he started jumping from tree branch to tree branch. The trip to the land of waves took Naruto a long time to reach because this was his first time traveling so far, so he had no idea where he was heading, and Asura was no help because the world had changed so much since he was alive, he could not remember every single place directions only the name of said place. Since neither of them had any idea how to get to the land of waves, they had to constantly ask people on their way or find someone to ask. They finally arrived when they saw a lopsided sign that said welcome to the land of waves one of Naruto's eyebrows rose at the condition of the sign. He entered the village. I'm freaking hungry Naruto sighed out loud when his stomach grumbled. He walked around hoping to find a place where he could get some food. Naruto felt the insides of his pockets and pulled out his wallet, he had some of the money Abito found when he destroyed a bandit camp. Good, more than enough money to survive for a while. Naruto took a look at his surroundings, the village looked in bad shape, some of the shops were destroyed, and there was a gigantic statue in the middle of the village that was made of gold of a fat midget. Asura decided to voice his thought seems like this village is in control of a very wealthy man, I've seen the likes of this while traveling with my brother and father. Maybe I could test myself and help out this village Naruto smirked at the thought of fighting a super strong enemy ninja. This fat midget probably has enough money to be a higher strength ninja. Naruto heard a loud female shout, and he knew that meant trouble, so he chose to follow the shout. When he arrived at the scene he saw two ninja of the village hidden by the mist, he recognized them as the demon brothers he never took the time to realize their name. But he knew that they relied on their teamwork, both of them having large metal gauntlets attached to one of their hands, and having poison on a claw on their other hand, plus they had a shuriken-style chain that they used together. Naruto saw that they were holding a young woman in their hands who had dark blue hair and black eyes. She was wearing a short-sleeved pink shirt with the end of the sleeves and the collar being red in color, with a long blue skirt. Save her from these scum Asura ordered, Naruto didn't like being ordered, but decided to do it because he wanted to. What are you guys doing with these women Naruto's voice rang through the clearing, the demon brother's head snapped towards Naruto's direction. It's just a brat no need to worry one of the brothers commented. Hey kid, leave now and we might not come back and harm you one of the brothers ordered. My name is not a kid, it's Naruto Uchiha, and what if I chose to stay here and kill you, guys Naruto asked. The brothers tensed for a moment after hearing that this kid was a part of the feared Uchiha clan, but then smirked as they thought it was just a weak genin trying to play hero. The woman looked into the eyes of the kid that came to help her, and she saw determination in those eyes. The demon brothers dropped her on the floor and kicked her in the stomach to make sure she did not get up. They turned back to the kid and saw him drop his hands out of his long-sleeved cloak. The dust started kicking up beneath the feet of the demon brothers, and they shot towards Naruto. Naruto's blood started pumping at the excitement of battle. One of the demon brothers got close enough to punch Naruto, but he grabbed his hands and kneed him in the stomach, getting a sharp gasp out of the brother. The other one tried to claw at Naruto, but made the mistake of staring into his three Tomo Sharingan and was immediately captured in a dot. Naruto took the time to slit the other brother's throat, who was still in immense pain from Naruto's chakra enchanted knee. He then killed the other one who was stuck in some illusion where he saw Naruto die from the poison in his claw. Naruto smirked as he looked at his first kill, others would be in shock at taking someone's life, but Naruto was proud of defeating level ninja so easily and saving a beautiful woman at the same time. It was easy because they underestimated you. Naruto frowned when he heard Asura speak, that nonsense had to ruin his moment, just then Naruto heard a groan and smacked himself in the face. He was so preoccupied in his own gloating that he forgot that he didn't check on the person he just saved. He ran over to the women and kneed down while turning off his Sharingan, he raised her head and rubbed her stomach. Asura chuckled at the sight you're definitely not cut out to be a medical ninja, lift her up and get her some help. 
She is not going to die, she is just in pain from the kick she received in the stomach. Naruto listened to Asura and lifted up the young woman's bridal style. Tsunami.my name is Tsunami thank you for helping me spoke to the woman in Naruto's hands, he looked down and saw her staring at him in the eyes. Are you okay Naruto questioned her. Yeah I've been through worse, but they were never ninja, just some bandits that came around trying to show off their rulership. Naruto sighed at the thought of more of these types of nonsense. Naruto was not a very peaceful person, but he did stand by morals. Madara always told him that Ichiha should never demote themselves by taking away a woman's innocence in a forceful manner. Tell me where you live and I will take you there Naruto told her in a soft manner. While she guided him through the small village she explained to Naruto the village's condition and Naruto took in every single detail he could. He finally reached her house, it actually looked pretty good since it was in an isolated area the man named Gato Tsunami told him about was probably unaware the house was here, but there was a chance that he would find out pretty soon. When Naruto was inside of the house the door immediately opened and a man stepped out, Naruto recognized this man as Kaiza Tsunami's husband from her explanations, Kaiza had short spiky black hair and black eyes, he had a small white rope tied around his head, which was tied on the right side of his head, and a small X-shaped scar on his chin. He wore a black t-shirt that had a white outline and a white pair of pants, he also had scars on his arms. The little boy followed Kaiza out who was named Inari Tsunami's son from her explanations. Inari has spiky black hair and dark colored eyes, he wore a green jumpsuit with a yellow shirt and a simple pair of sandals. The old man followed the little boy who was named Tazuna Tsunami's grandfather from her explanations, Tazuna is a gray-haired bespectacled man with a large beard and dark eyes, he wore a sleeveless v-neck shirt with an obi, pants and a pair of sandals, he also carried a towel around his neck and wore a pointed hat on his head. Tsunami-chan exclaimed the worried voice of Kaiza. He ran up to her while Naruto slowly dropped her and helped her stand. Mom Inari ran up and hugged her mom's leg while Tazuna walked up towards the group. Isaac kun this is Naruto Uchiha, he is a ninja that saved me from those horrid demon brothers Tsunami cried on Kaiza's chest, the stress of almost getting trapped coming back at her. Isa turned to Naruto and placed one hand on the back of Tsunami's back, while the other one was extended waiting for Naruto to shake it, which Naruto did. Thank you for saving my wife, my name is Kaiza, I am in your debt. Kaiza gave Naruto a big smile. Hey, hey, it was no problem, I saw her getting manhandled so I decided to help, plus it gave me a chance to fight a really strong enemy. Naruto gave the family a small smile. That night they invited Naruto into their house, Kaiza and Tazuna cooking dinner that night, they didn't want Tsunami to go to work at all that night. When they started eating they watched as Naruto wolfed down his food at an enormous pace, when he saw the looks that they were giving him, he just shrugged his shoulders and told them that he was really hungry and hadn't eaten in a while. Naruto, I'm sure that you saw the bad condition of the village, and Tsunami-chan explained it to you. I know that I shouldn't be asking for any more help after you save my wife, but can you please help us fight Gato, and his followers Kaiza spoke up looking at Naruto with pleading eyes. If you accept you might get to fight any other ninja that Gato has hired, plus you saw that gold statue that little nonsense must be loaded. Naruto nodded his head in agreement with Asura, this could be a win-win situation for him and the citizens of the Land of Waves. I'll help, tomorrow I'll come with you guys to the bridge and guard the workers. Now tell me more about this village. That night Naruto gained a lot of useful information, like how Uzushio the land of the whirlpool, was nearby. The next day Naruto was outside on top of the roof sitting in an Indian style position, he did not get a single second of sleep last night. Naruto heard the people in the house he was on top of making breakfast and talking about how today was going to be a good day. Naruto body flickered inside the house appearing inside the living room where all the family members were making their preparations for the day in a cloud of ravens. Whoa, brother Naruto, that was cool, can you teach me how to do that Inari asked Naruto with awestricken eyes, Naruto ruffled the kid's hair and told him maybe later. Azuna and Kaiza, I need you two to stay here today, I sensed some strong chakra source at the bridge the whole day, and it is not friendly it was really Asura who sensed it, but Naruto didn't think that information was needed to be known it might be a big fight, and I don't want either of you getting caught in the crossfire. Then men nodded their heads in agreement. Kaiza then spoke up don't worry about damaging the bridge. We just started it yesterday and don't worry about any of the workers being there. We gave them this day off. Naruto felt good hearing that type of information. Alright guys I may or may not be back here, later Naruto flashed them a smile, but before he could leave Tsunami gave him a big hug, and Naruto felt something close to motherly love, even though he never experienced it before, and he received a hug and pat of the back from both Tazuna and Kaiza, when Inari gave him a tearful hug. You better come back they said. Naruto gave them one last look before he left, and followed the chakra source Asura could sense. 
When Naruto arrived at the bridge he saw a sight that both shocked and excited him. Right on the water underneath the bridge stood someone who was a tall and muscular man with pale skin, short spiky black hair, brown eyes, and small eyebrows. He had bandages wrapped around his mouth like a mask. He was shirtless. With his chest only covered by a belt to which he attached his K-U-B-I-K-I-R-I-B-M-C-H-M a big sword that showed his affiliation as one of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist. He was wearing baggy pants with a striped pattern typical of K-I-R-I-G-A-K-U-R-E the village hidden in the mist and mimetic wrist warmers extending up to his elbows with matching leg warmers, Naruto realized this man is Abusa Mamachi. Demon of the Hidden Mist. He looked as Abusa's sight and saw a teenager maybe three to five years older than himself who had long black hair, pale skin and large dark brown eyes, a slender frame, and was also quite short for his age. His outfit consisted of the standard Karigakura pinstriped outfit which stopped at his knees, over this he wore a green Hayori with white trimmings. And around his waist a brown sash with a fringe trail wrapped around his waist twice, this teenager was Haku, Zabuza's partner in crime. Am I never thought Gato would hire such a strong ninja stated a still in shock Naruto. Zabuza and Haku looked at the young male, Zabuza spoke up are you a ninja? If so, was it you that killed the demon brothers? Naruto smirked you it was me he stated proudly. And why is that brat Zabuza questioned him. It's because the waves are now under my protection, either leave now or face the power of Naruto Ichiha Naruto threatened them. Me and Haku would love to face the power of a little brat like you Naruto could see the outline of a smirk underneath Zabuza's mask. The mist started forming around the bridge, and Naruto activated his Sharingan and realized that this mist was made from chakra. Naruto started to feel an overpowering urge to kill himself right then and there. Feeling intent, God. Madara sensei did not bring me enough for this Naruto slowly scanned the field. Fill Haku first, she is an ice user Asura informed him. Naruto was glad that Asura's ability to sense chakra was still there, even though it was not as strong as in the past, it still came in handy. Just then Naruto saw a shift in the mist thanks to his Sharingan and raised a kunai from his pouch swiftly to block the incoming strike. Zabuza's gigantic sword came crushing on Naruto's kunai, Naruto had to channel chakra through the kunai to make it stronger. Brat, today is the day you will find out why they call me the demon of the mist a dark chuckle said from the owner of the blade that began to overpower Naruto's kunai. Make no mistake Naruto, this guy will kill you in a moment of hesitation. Asura commented from the inside of Naruto's mind. Right when the big sword was about to crush Naruto's kunai, Asura's voice popped up Naruto, behind you he exclaimed. Damn it, I forgot about the ice user was the only thought that flashed in Naruto's mind at that moment. Naruto's Sharingan blazed widely as he turned to see Haku appear behind him with a long ice needle, time seemed to go by slower, as one of the Sharingan's abilities was to capture fast-paced moments. You are standing on water, release the chakra from your feet now Asura's voice commanded inside of Naruto's head. Naruto realized that Asura was right and did as told, Naruto felt himself drop through the water and heard Haku's ice needle clash with Zabuza's sword. Naruto then started channeling chakra into his feet while running up the water as if he was running upstairs, he soon reached the surface of the water and took a deep breath. Zabuza's eyes narrowed slightly at the sight of Naruto's Sharingan, so you are Ichiha, I see you weren't bluffing about being one Zabuza spoke. The mist started to slowly form around them again, Zabuza and Haku disappeared from sight. Naruto heard chuckling from the mist, Kiri had some sort of system back then, where they pitted academy graduates against each other in death matches as a final exam, with the exceptionally skilled students named prime candidates for the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist. After Izabuza Mamachi, not yet a student, killed over hundreds of my academy classmates, that system was discontinued throughout the speech Naruto created several shadow clones and made them spread out that is why they call me demon of the mist Zabuza shouted as his sword came through the mist falling down towards Naruto. Naruto smirked got you he thought as he crouched down and called a jutsu's name, fire release. Flame whirlwind fire erupted from Naruto's body spiraling towards Abusa, and it got him, Naruto heard a pop and water splash, he realized that it was just a clone. Demonic mirroring ice crystals Naruto heard a shout behind him, he already knew where Haku was, her chakra waves are different than Zabuza's. Zabuza could not sense the mist was made from his own chakra. Time to get rid of this mist Naruto thought as he clasped his hands together and jumped in the air, wind release. Great breakthrough gust of wind blew the mist away. Naruto landed back on the water gracefully and saw that he was in some sort of dome of ice mirrors, he realized that it was the Haku who had called out earlier. He saw that every ice mirror had a Haku on it, he frowned not knowing what to do in a situation like this. Finish him Haku Naruto heard Zabuza's voice from outside the mirror. Thousand flying water needles of death at that moment thousands of ice needles with a purple tip formed from the water particles in the air, flew at Naruto. High release. 
Great Fire Annihilation Naruto exclaimed as he spun in all directions, the heat of the destroyed most of Haku's water needles, one of them went through Naruto's side, it didn't hit any major arteries, but if left untreated he could get an infection. Naruto pulled out the ice needle and looked as blood started leaking onto his white garments. It would be near impossible to catch her inside this ice dome, but I think I found a way, pour chakra into your fist and punch one of the walls, then send a wave of lightning chakra into it. It should work because Haku seems to be running out of chakra, and this dome needs a tremendous amount to sustain itself. Naruto thanked Kami that he had a Sura. Naruto ran forward with a burst of speed and slammed his fist into the ice mirror with more force, then kneaded and channeled tons of lightning chakra into that one mirror, since the mirrors work as a source of transportation, that lighting wave knitted its way through every single ice mirror until it shocked the hell out of Haku. The mirrors then started to melt one by one. Haku stand back for a while, I'll handle the boys Abusa commanded. Tabuza rushed towards Naruto in the clearing and stopped a few meters ahead of him, while going through a set of hand seals, his eyebrows rose as he saw Naruto going through the same set of hand seals. Hmm, so this is the power of the Sharingan, able to copy others Abusa, was almost done completing the hand seals, but was shocked when he heard the next thing out of Naruto's mouth. Water release. Water dragon bullet an enormous dragon made of water rose out of the water and flew its Abusa, he then slammed into a tree on the shore. Abusa saw Mahaku's voice rang through the clearing as he ran towards Abusa's injured body. The moment of weakness Asura commented. Naruto took that as a sign to attack, he reached in his cloak and pulled out a kunai and flung it at the two unaware ninja he then flashed through a set of hand seals, fire release. Flamethrower a wave of long hot flame expelled from Naruto's mouth approaching its Abusa and Haku. Haku lifted her hands up and spoke, ice release. Ice rock dome of magnificent nothingness and enclosed dome of ice was created around Haku and Zabuza, Naruto's flamethrower melted through it, but did not reach them. When the smoke cleared from Naruto's attack and Haku's defense clashing together, it revealed a standing Zabuza and Haku. Another Zabuza appeared right next to Naruto and faced his palm toward Naruto's face, Naruto felt the water under him get denser, which made it way easier for him to stand on. Water prison techniques Zabuza said as he smirked looking at the now trapped Naruto. The trapped Naruto smirked as he disappeared in a puff. Another Naruto surfaced on the water and trapped the now shocked Zabuza in a water prison, the Zabuza that was next to Haku turned into water, showing that it was just a clone. Haku moved to try and save his sensei, but stopped when he saw five other Naruto clones surrounding the one that had captured Zabuza. Behind Haku the kunai Naruto threw from earlier was stuck on a tree, the kunai then changed into a Naruto to show that it was just a transformation technique, Naruto grabbed Haku with one hand around her neck, and the other had a kunai positioned on her back ready to go through. Your move Naruto stated with a smug smirk on his face. Don't get too cocky Asura warned him. How did you copy them, you didn't even know where I was. Zabuza's weak voice was questioned from inside of the water prison. The real Naruto was the one that had Haku captured and spoke, when you let the water dragon hit you, I realized something was up, plus the clone had way less chakra than the original. Also when you created the mist a second time I created some clones, one of the clones watched you create the mist, and I got the memory. Naruto's vision was already starting to blur from the untreated wound he got earlier. Haku's voice spoke up in a calm-like fashion, but did you realize that I was a clone another ice mirror appeared behind Naruto, and Haku came out of it ready to strike. Naruto chuckled a bit, yes. Yes, I did alone wind chakra and powered kunai flew from a tree nearby and went through Haku's side. Zabuza's eyes widened when he saw Haku fall to the ground, just at that moment the water prison fell, and the Naruto shadow clone kicked up Zabuza's fallen sword and caught it with both his hands, then sent it stabbed it forward towards Zabuza, all in one movement. Naruto was surprised by what he saw next. Haku didn't die from the kunai strike, but then reappeared using one of her ice mirrors in front of Zabuza and Naruto. Naruto watched as the blade went through Haku's stomach and then Zabuza's, making Haku's sacrifice worthless. Why Naruto asked with wide eyes, why did you save him? You could have easily escaped because I thought I killed you with that kunai. Naruto you said your name was Haku asked, making sure he got the name right, Naruto nodded his head, and Haku continued to speak, do you have someone special to you? Someone you will do anything to protect? Naruto thought of it for a moment, he thought of Asura, but realized that Asura didn't need protection. He then thought of Kaiza and his family for a moment, they weren't really special to him, they were just people that Naruto tolerated and wanted to help. No, not really he answered Haku's question. Haku gave him a small smile, well Naruto-kun, once you find your special person he took a moment to cough out blood, then continued to speak, you will truly know strength, and you will understand why I just did what I did. I actually forgot how long Zabuza Sama's sword is. Haku. Gave a small chuckle at his own joke while staring down at the sword that was in his stomach, he then coughed out his last breath. 
Naruto slowly pulled out the sword from Haku and Zabuza's stomachs, then laid Haku down right next to Zabuza. Zabuza stared at the sky as life started to slowly drain from his eyes, typical Haku Naruto was about to speak up, but then saw tears forming in the corner of Zabuza's eyes. How old are you brat Zabuza asked Naruto without looking at him. I'm 11, my birthday was a while ago. Naruto responded to the man. Zabuza chuckled, to think that I would be defeated by a brat. Naruto gained a tick mark on his forehead at being called a brat. He was about to respond, but stopped when he saw Zabuza's mouth move to speak, can you do me a favor. Bury me with Haku, that brat was more of a son to me than a partner. You can take my sword for bounty if you want. Naruto didn't respond, but just watched as life slowly left Zabuza's eyes. Zabuza Mamachi the demon of the mist died with a smile on his face. Naruto respected Zabuza's last request and buried both him and Hoku together, he then used Zabuza's sword as a headstone for both of them, he then left to go back to Kaiza's house. As Naruto walked towards Kaiza's house he felt his sides start to heat up and fell face forward to the ground. The ice needle that struck you must have been poisoned Asura said in a grave tone. Bam was the only thought that went through Naruto's mind as he lost all consciousness. Naruto awoke in a dark room and realized that he was back in Kaiza's house in one of their guest rooms. He groaned as he saw that he was shirtless and wearing white style anbu pants, he looked at his wound and realized that it was bandaged up. They cleaned it, the poison wasn't strong enough to instantly kill, I guess Haku was hoping that it would immobilize you, and Zabuza would finish you. Asura's voice commented. I feel better now, I finally got to rest. Naruto walked out the room and down the stairs, he stretched out his sore muscles, and it was a while since he had a good rest. He saw Tsunami and Inari cleaning some dishes, the only people missing were the old man and Kaiza. Where is the old man and Kaiza Naruto asked, Tsunami was startled for a second, but then brightened up when she saw that it was only Naruto. They went out to the bridge to see if it was safe, they didn't know whether you defeated the enemy ninja or not. Naruto sighed at her explanation. I defeated them, but one of them poisoned me. Thanks for cleaning me up. I appreciate it. Tsunami's eyes brightened, Inari started babbling about how cool brother Naruto was, and how he wanted to be just like him one day. I'm going to go to the bridge to make sure that Kaiza and the old man are okay, Gato might try something now that he lost his ninja. Tsunami forced him to eat something before he left, while Inari kept bugging him about teaching him, so Naruto might decide to teach him a couple of basics before he left. Naruto left after he ate some breakfast and stretched a little bit. He took a stroll through the village and saw that not a single one of Gato's goons were there. As he arrived at the bridge he saw Kaiza working with some men, while Tazuna instructed them. Throughout Naruto's battle with Zabuza and Haku, he didn't damage the bridge which made the people happy. Naruto looked around and sat under a tree after greeting the men. They were really glad to hear that he defeated the two ninjas that came to harm them. I sense hundreds of chakra that are too big to belong to civilians and too small to belong to a ninja Asura warned Naruto. Naruto's eyebrow raised, bandits. He suggested, he opened his eyes and saw ten big boats filled with bandits, one fat man on a small boat by himself and cannons on another boat. Naruto saw the fat man give a big grin at the side of the bridge, and the scared villagers, I see Kaiza is still alive, guess I shouldn't have trusted a ninja to do a real man's job Naruto grinned at that. Kaiza stood tall with no fear at the side of the men, Gato, your evil hand on this village will be removed today seeing that Kaiza wanted this battle to be over, and Naruto stood and walked towards him. You and what army Gato asked him while busting out laughing. Naruto walked up behind Kaiza and placed his hands on his shoulders, Kaiza was startled for a moment, but then realized that it was Naruto, take a break and round up everyone in the village tell them that from this day on they are free. Naruto then said the next part to Gato, this army. Gato looked around to make sure that no one was pranking him, then he turned to face Naruto and doubled up with laughter, what's this? A brat like you think you can defeat me Gato, then gave the signal for his men to fire the cannons. Before the men could even attempt to start their raid, Naruto jumped down in front of them and finished a set of hand seals and called out while slamming his hands on the surface of the water, water release. Water vortex a gigantic hole appeared in the water and started pulling the ships in. Some bandits tried to swim out of the water, but they were not strong enough because they couldn't use chakra to cling on the surface of the water. Naruto didn't stop there, he jumped in the air and did another, fire release. Great fireball a gigantic fireball was hurled towards the center of the vortex, the cries of the men were heard. Soon the vortex closed and some objects started to float above the water. That was a good combination of water and fire elements Asura praised. Well they should have never tried to take on Achiha Naruto said with pride. Asura grumbled something about cocky Achihas and their arrogant ways. That night the wave people celebrated as they raided Gato's bases in search of money and their lost loved ones. They found a lot of money and their traumatized loved ones. The little kids kept bugging Naruto and asking him questions about the ninja life. It seems like they idolize you. 
Asura chuckled when he saw Naruto getting dragged around the village meeting people after people. One week later. For about a week Naruto stayed in the land of waves, he took the time to write a ton of scrolls. Naruto wrote in the scrolls some basic chakra control steps and some easy to learn, he planned to give this Inari before he left. Naruto helped Inari unlock his chakra and taught him some basics before he gave him the scrolls. The whole village came to see Naruto before he left, while he gave his goodbyes to Kaiza and his family. With Naruto's help the bridge was complete, and Gato's reign of terror was over. Wait what should we name the bridge a man from the crowd yelled. People started shouting out names left and right until they heard a really good name from the crowd, how about the great Naruto bridge the person that suggested the name blushed when all eyes landed on her. Everyone started murmuring then settled on the name because without Naruto the bridge probably wouldn't even exist. Then it settled Kaiza, the new leader of the village yelled with excitement. Naruto smirked at the thought of a bridge named after him, he turned to walk away, while everyone yelled their goodbyes and thanks, Naruto just waved up one hand without turning around while walking away. Now time it's time to visit Yuzushi Agakura Naruto thought as he followed the directions Asura gave him. After a while of walking Naruto stopped and pulled a kunai from his newly fixed clock and flung it in a tree, an object shifted out the way. The object was a person that had a Venus flytrap-like extensions that emerged from its sides, enveloping its head and upper body as a shell, which it was able to open and close, half the body of the person was black, while the other one was white, the person was wearing a Akatsuki cloak, the Akatsuki cloak was a long black cloak that had red clouds on it. Naruto recognized this person as a thing that Madara created before he died, it was Zetsu. Zetsu, what are you doing following me around questioned Naruto as he stared down at the figure. Abito told me to follow you to see if you were doing anything that could be against Akatsuki's plans the two halves of Zetsu took turns speaking. Naruto put on an emotionless mask trying not to give any sign of weakness. Well I suggest you stop following me unless you are looking for a fight Naruto threatened him, he was not afraid of Zetsu, but he was afraid of the spying skills that Zetsu held. I let you sense my chakra for a reason Zetsu told him. Naruto's curiosity rose, what would that reason be? Zetsu gave a small weird chuckle, I have my own reasons for why I am telling you this which I'll tell you after my explanation Naruto's eyes narrowed Zetsu continued speaking on, the night you were taken away from Kanoha Shisui Ichiha your now dead brother Zetsu, paused to examine Naruto's reaction, but didn't receive one so continued. Well he was holding a girl who is now 11 named Sirenwo as your twin sister. The only reason why Abito didn't take her also was because he just came from his fight with the fourth Hokage Minato Namikas and was weak, so he knew that Shisui would not hesitate to kill him. Shisui lived about seven years after that, he died while helping his best friend Itachi battle Shin Ichiha, a powerful Ichiha who Abito helped slaughter most of the Ichiha clan. Even though both Shisui and Itachi fought Sin together, Sin was just too powerful. He ended up killing Shisui which helped Itachi unlock the Manjekyo Sharingan and use a Matarasu on Sin. But it was useless because Sin used Kamui to escape. Zetsu finished explaining, he gave Naruto some time to finish digesting all the information. Naruto on the inside was flabbergasted, he was the brother of Shisui Ichiha and had a twin sister, why didn't Abito tell him? Tell me who my parents were, Naruto commanded Zetsu. Zetsu didn't say a thing for a while, he was trying to recollect that information he then remembered, your mother was Naori Ichiha, and father was Itama Senju, but he was an orphan that went got adopted by some Ichiha civilians, and was named Tommy Ichiha. Your father didn't know anything about his Senju heritage, but that still didn't stop him from becoming a good ninja. Your mother though she was one of the few Ichiha to unlock the Manjekyo Sharingan, but that still did not keep her from dying on the night of the Kaiubi attack. Naruto was about to ask more questions until he saw Zetsu slowly start to sink through the ground and began to speak, I didn't tell you all that without a reason, I cannot afford to waste my time keeping tabs on you for Abito, I have other important matters to attend to. Since I won't be watching you, I want to make sure you don't backstab us. Saren is a very beautiful young lady. It would be upsetting if anything bad happened to her. Zetsu gave a sickening laugh as he completely disappeared beneath the ground. That damn nonsense. Naruto thought as he clenched his fist and punched a tree making a very deep hole inside it. That thing cannot be trusted, his black half reminds me of something I saw a long time ago. Don't listen to his threats, he wouldn't be able to harm her inside Konoha. It's guarded by ninja like Minato Namikas, Tsunade Senju, and Jiraiya the Toad Sage. Asura warned him. Akatsuki has people like Abito, Kissam, and Pain. So I have every right to believe that the threat could be followed through Naruto shivered at the thought of Pain. Let's just continue towards Yuzushio, when we reach it we will explore then plan out our next moves. Asura ordered. As Naruto walked in the direction towards Yuzushio he recollected the memory of when he first met Pain. Flashback. 
Naruto who was now 8 years old, was traveling with Ibido and Zetsu towards A-M-E-G-A-K-U-R-E the village hidden by the rain, their goal was to try and join Akatsuki, a group that Madara told them was led by a powerful user. Ibido has already been meeting N-A-G-A-T-O the leader of Akatsuki and making arrangements. Ibido held his hand out to stop Naruto and Zetsu, he used Kamui to transport himself, Naruto and Zetsu to the location of Nagato's paths. Naruto looked inside the dark room toward several dark figures in the room and two figures who were out in the opening. The first figure Naruto recognized as Pain from Abito's explanation, he had medium-length spiky orange hair, but as a path of pain, he possessed Nagato's Rinnegan, bore six piercings, a metal bar through each ear, three studs through the side of its upper nose, and one spike stud on each end of the bottom lip, he also had three piercings on each wrist. At least one on its upper wrist and some just under his neck, his face was also a little pale, he also wore the Akatsuki cloak and a aim headband that had a slash through the bars. The second person Naruto realized was Conan, she was a relatively tall woman who had short straight blue hair, amber eyes with lavender eyeshadow, and elaborate piercing. She wore a light blue paper flower in her hair, and she also wore an Akatsuki cloak. Who is the kid Pain asked Ibido with an emotionless face. This kid is Naruto Ichiha, he is nothing of importance right now. Ibido replied. Naruto stared at Pain in the eyes, while the other man stared into Naruto's Sharingan, Naruto liked keeping his Sharingan activated, Madara and Ibido both did it, and they were powerful ninjas. We need more members in Akatsuki I already have three prime candidates, Kakuzu a mortal that stole the hidden waterfalls secret technique, Sasori a puppeteer genius, and finally Sinichiha, I will get Sin to join you us, I'll have Zetsu help you find the others, and find more ninja of the S rank class. Ibido ordered. Pain teared his gaze from Naruto and returned his attention to Abito and spoke, I will go along with the plan now seeing that we both have the same plan for the future, but be sure to remember that I am the leader here and will continue to listen to you, because I want to Abito's eyes narrow dangerously at Pain, as he raised his hand to the wall behind Naruto, if you betray my trust. You will be crushed dot with it the wall behind Naruto exploded, he had to jump out of the way to avoid getting hit by any fragments. Abito only nodded not wanting to engage in a battle with pain, he put his hand on Naruto's shoulder, and they both were enveloped inside Abito's Kamui. That night after a training session with Madara Naruto learned something new, because I want to he whispered to himself. He thought of how cool pain was to threaten Abito. The Rinnegan is a powerful dejutsu, my father mastered. Asura commented in Naruto's mind with pride. Rinnegan Naruto whispered to himself that night, remembering how pain crushed the wall behind him without even moving. End of flashback. Which one do you think is more powerful? The Rinnegan or the Manjekyo Sharingan? Naruto asked Asura. Um, that would be tough to say, I suppose that it depends on who the user is Asura responded. Naruto was starting to approach a village judging by the size of the place. He saw multiple destroyed buildings, one building in the center of the village was not completely destroyed, so Naruto could make out a sort of swirl painted on the building. Um, the village seems to have been composed of several high-rise buildings. Asura commented as he looked at the damaged village feeling pity for his children. Naruto saw a wide river seemingly running through the village and was gaped by destroyed bridges, the surrounding countryside consisted of steep hills. Where do you want me to go now? This was your idea Naruto asked. Ugh I don't know maybe the gigantic building in the center. It was destroyed but could still support itself, came Asura's sarcastic reply. Naruto chose not to reply but sprinted towards the building and entered through the destroyed doors. He spent hours searching but didn't find anything of importance, he found out that this was the cage tower. He went to the only room he had not explored yet the cage office. The only reason why most of this building was still in contact was because the invading ninja had to move quickly or else the Kanoha ninjas that were on their way would arrive and kill them. Naruto saw no bodies, Asura told him that it was probably because the Kanoha ninjas held a burial for them out of respect and regret for arriving too late. As he entered the dusty cage office he saw a disc and some chairs in the room, he went through the cabinets unlocking this with his blood, he found some outfits for different rank ninja, and he found some scrolls. What really interested Naruto was that he found a sword, A, eh? too bad I'm not a sword type of person it was true Naruto was the type of person to fight with flashy dot. Keep it and find someone who could teach you how to use it came Asura's commanding voice. Nah, I'm okay. After 5 minutes of arguing with Asura, Naruto finally decided to accept Asura's wishes and picked up the sword and examined it, the sword was white with a black handle the color of the sword sheath was black, the sword had some seals on it that Naruto guessed was for absorbing chakra when he pumped some in it. Naruto then looked at the outfits, what really interested him was how the cage outfit was similar to Asura's. Asura smirked, seeing that his children had a good taste in fashion. Naruto removed his plain white cloak and put on the cage outfit with a white kimono, the kimono was held closed by a black sash. 
Naruto then took the sword and put it inside his sheath and attached the sheath to his back with chakra. The next thing Naruto found was a blank headband, so he also equipped it. Asura gained a sense of pride as he examined Naruto's new outfit, which was almost the same as his. Naruto sealed the scrolls inside of one scroll and put it in a pouch which he clipped on his right hip. Naruto looked at himself in a mirror and smirked at his new appearance. Naruto, instead of leaving here, do you want to stay here and train? We can rebuild the village while we are at it Naruto pondered on that thought, he could transform this village into his private training place and headquarters. I would like that, plus it would give me some time to learn what I can about the place Gramamito came from he smiled as he looked over the village from outside the cage tower. Well I hope you like fish, because that seems to be the only food the village has to offer Naruto groaned at the thought of having to eat the same thing over and over again. We learn those in the scroll and improve your chakra control, from you send you and Uzumaki blood, you have an unthinkable amount of chakra, so it will be hard to learn to control it at a perfect level, but because of send you and Ichiha abilities to control their chakra at a high level, it will be a lot easier. Remember you need to work hard and keep training, I'll help you in any way I can, but I don't really have much information on dot once you get older, I will teach you how to control your yang chakra and the other things you inherited from me. Naruto groaned at the thought of having to wait to learn from Asura, he knew of how powerful Asura was back in his day, and wanted to learn everything he knows. Come on Asura, just teach me now I can handle it Naruto complained. Naruto, I will not allow you to become power hungry like my brother Indra, I want you to grow up working hard then when I see that you are ready, I will teach you what I know. Naruto groaned but nodded his head in understanding. Naruto opened the window and leaped out running through the village, hoping to find a good place to train. One day I will meet you Seren-chan Naruto promised himself as he activated his Sharingan. Two years later. Hanahagakur was an enormous well-known village, some thought of it to be the strongest of all the ninja villages, the leader of this village is Minato Namikaze, the fastest man alive. In one of the private training grounds a group of people were standing around watching the future leaders of Konoha train. The group of people that were the clan heads and parents of the children. Minato Namikaze fourth Hokage of Konoha and head of the Namikaze clan, has bright blue eyes and spiky blonde hair, Minato also had jaw-length bangs framing either side of his face, his normal attire consisted of a standard Konoha uniform with two bands on both of his sleeves, a green flak jacket, blue forehead protector, and blue sandals. He wore a short-sleeved long white Hayori over his normal attire, closed in the front by a thin orange rope. The Hayori was decorated by red flame-like motifs on the edges, with the kanji for fourth Hokage written vertically down the back. Next to Minato was his beautiful wife Kashina Uzumaki, head of the Uzumaki clan, she had a slender, but feminine build, fair skin, violet eyes, fiery red hair, a common trait among the members of the Uzumaki clan that fell down to her waist. She wore a blue forehead protector with her hair tied up in a high ponytail, and strands framing the sides of her face, her attire consisted of a standard Kanoha flak jacket over a black short-sleeved shirt, and black form-fitting pants that reached her calves. Yugaku Ichiha, head of the Ichiha clan was up next, he had short black hair that reached to his shoulders and onyx-colored eyes. He wore a simple kimono with grey pants which had the clan symbol on the back. His wife Mikoto Ichiha stood next to him, she is a fair-skinned woman with long, straight black hair, with bangs hanging on either side of her face to roughly frame her cheeks and black eyes. She wore a simple dark purple blouse with a red plump skirt and a light yellow apron normally worn over it. Their son, Itachi Ichiha, had onyx eyes under which were long, pronounced tear troughs jet black hair that was pulled back in a low ponytail, and his face was framed with center parted bangs that extended to his chin. His clothes consisted of a black shirt with the Ichiha clan symbol on the back, bandages around his ankles, and black sandals, he wore tan pants with a weapons pouch strapped to his back. The Ashi Hayuga, head of the Hayuga clan, has long, black hair, and featureless wide eyes like all members of his clan. He wore his very traditional, loose-fitting robes with a long-sleeved brown Hayori. Shikaku Nara, head of the Nara clan, had two scars on the right side of his face, he had dark hair tied up into a spiky ponytail, dark eyes as well as a goatee. His ears were also pierced. He wore a standard jonin flak jacket. Tsum Inuzuka, head of the Inuzuka clan, has long, spiky, untamed brown hair, vertical slit-like pupils, elongated canine teeth and nails. She also has the clan fang markings on her cheeks, as well as markings over her eyes, and a dark shade of purple lipstick. She wears the standard outfit of a Kanoha ninja, consisting of a flak jacket and a black suit underneath, with the sleeves rolled up and bandages around her legs. Shibi Aburam, head of the Aburam clan, his eyes obscured by dark glasses which feature a single tassel hanging down from one side, he has very spiky short black hair and a mustache. He typically wears a high-collared outfit, while carrying a gourd on his back that is used for holding his clan's insects. 
The Byuki Hirono head of the Hirono clan who were famous for their small amount of chakra but near perfect chakra control. She is a fair skinned woman with shoulder length blonde hair with a single bang which falls down into her face, has green eyes, and wears a white dress with three red circular designs at the bottom of the front of her dress, as well as the back. Those Akamichi, head of the Akamichi clan, is a tall, plump man with long, spiky red hair and purple markings on his cheeks, a common trait in the Akamichi clan. He wears a samurai-like outfit which entails a black suit completed with armor that has the kanji for food. Inoichi Yamanaka head of the Yamanaka clan, he has long ash blonde hair reaching into his back, which he wore spiky on top and ending in a long ponytail, blue-green eyes and strong facial features, which included a well-defined jawline. He wore the standard outfit of the Konoha interrogation unit, complete with a long black overcoat. The other minor clan heads of Konoha were not there. Some of the jonin of the village were watching from afar. The group that was training was a sight to be amazed at. The fresh genin were preparing for the upcoming chunin exams that were going to be held in Konoha, and they were preparing for war. Hey, U-M-O-G-A-K-U-R-E village hidden by clouds, ninjas were spotted multiple times on the Land of Fire's territory, the council tried sending them letters to warn them, but they didn't listen. One night a Kumo ambassador came seeking an alliance with Konoha, the council and Minato agreed. They then caught the very same ninja sneaking away with the Hayuga hair Hinata Hayuga, Minato swiftly killed him with a Rasengan. Kumo has been hostile with Konoha ever since then, when the council heard that Kumo ninja were participating in the Chunin exams, they were instantly on high alert. Next was I-W-A-G-A-K-U-R-E village hidden by rocks, ninjas, they were constantly attacking Konoha ninjas when they were on a mission. It was plain and simple, Iwa hated Konoha because of Minato, in the third ninja war, Minato killed hundreds of them with a sword and his flying thunder god technique. They were coming to the Chunin exams also. They planned to see how the Chunin exams went to decide whether they should declare war or not. They watched as the Kanoha 15 trained. It was teams fighting other teams to see which teams would give up first. Gurunai Yuhi watched her Team Shino Aburam, Kiba Inuzuka, and Hinata Hayuga battle the others, she is a fair-skinned woman of slender build, she has long black untamed hair reaching her upper back, and very unique eyes that are red in color, her hands and upper thighs are also wrapped in bandages, and she wears the Kanoha forehead protector and regular shinobi sandals. Shino Aburam heir of the Aburam clan, he has dark bushy brown hair and dark narrow eyes. He wore the same style as the rest of his clan, consisting of dark sunglasses and a sea green jacket with a high upturned collar. Biba Inuzuka heir of the Inuzuka clan, he has messy brown hair, sharp black eyes with vertical slit-like pupils, pronounced canine teeth, and nails that he can change into claws, he also has the distinctive red fang markings of the Inuzuka clan on his cheeks. He wore dark grayish pants reaching to his calves and a gray hooded fur-lined coat, with the hood usually placed on his head. Anada Hayuga heir of the Hayuga clan, she has dark blue hair and fair skin, she also has the customary white eyes of her clan, she wore a cream-colored hooded jacket with a fire symbol on the upper right and left sleeves and fur around the cuffs and hem, with navy blue pants, she wore her Kanoha forehead protector around her neck. Next to Kurunai was her life partner Asuma Suratobi, as he watched his Team Choji Akamichi, Ino Yamanaka, and Shikamaru Nara, secretly hoped that they would crush Kurunai's team. Asuma is a tall man, with brown eyes, short, black spiky hair, and a beard. His clothing consisted of the standard Konoha ninja uniform with the sleeves rolled up halfway, flak jacket, regular shinobi sandals and forehead protector. He also wore a sash that had the kanji for fire. Joji Akamichi heir of the Akamichi clan, he has spiky brown hair, swirl marks on his cheeks, and like the rest of his clan, he has a more robust physique, he wore black shorts, a long white scarf, a short-sleeved green heiori, over a light green shirt with his clan's obligatory kanji for food. Ino Yamanaka heir of the Yamanaka clan, she is a fair-skinned girl of average height with blue eyes, she has long pale blonde hair that reaches down her waist, which is always seen in a high ponytail with bangs covering the right side of her face. She wore a short purple vest-like blouse with a raised collar, a purple apron skirt that is cut off on the sides, and bandages on her stomach and legs, she also wore purple and white elbow warmers with this, and her forehead protector round her waist as a belt. Shikamaru Nara, heir of the Nara clan, has shoulder-length black hair tied in a spiky ponytail and narrow brown eyes. He wore a green lined mesh t-shirt under a short-sleeved grey jacket with green edges, adorned on both the sleeves and the back with a circle with a line through it, his blue forehead protector worn around his left arm, brown pants, and blue sandals. Next to Asuma was Mike Guy yelling about how youthful his Students Tenten, Niji Hayuga and Rock Lee are, he is a tall and well-built man with high cheekbones, thick eyebrows and black hair cut in a bowl style. Guy wears a green jumpsuit, orange striped leg warmers, and the standard Kanoha flak jacket, his forehead protector, is on a red cloth and is worn around his waist, like a belt. 
Benton is an amazing weapon master for her age. She has black hair and dark brown. She wears her hair in Chinese style buns on either side of her head with short fringe bangs falling over her forehead protector which she wears in the traditional M-A-N-N-E-R around the forehead. She wears a pink sleeveless blouse with red sleeve trimmings and yellow fastening buttons, as well as dark green pants, a pouch adjusted to her thigh, and standard blue ninja sandals. Niji Hayuga, prodigy of the Hayuga clan, has long dark brown hair and white eyes. Niji wore a black forehead protector that he wore snugly over his forehead, a khaki shirt, under which he wore a dull blue shirt with a mesh armor underneath it, dark brown shorts, blue shinobi sandals. He also had bandages wrapped around his right arm, chest, and right leg. Rock Lee a promising Tejutsu fighter, he has very thick eyebrows and large rounded black eyes, his hair is cut and styled into a bowl cut style like guy, and he wore the same attire, consisting of a green jumpsuit, orange leg warmers, and a red forehead protector worn as a belt. He wore bandages that wrapped around his arm ending near the bottom of his elbow. Standing next to Mike Guy was his eternal rival Kakashi Haddock, who was giggling while reading a orange-covered book, but his one eye was actually on his T.A.M. Sakura Haruno, Mita Yuzumaki Namikas, and Mina Yuzumaki Namikas, Kakashi is a fit and relatively tall shinobi, with spiky silver hair and dark grey eyes, he wore a mask over the nose and lower half of his face. He wore a Kanoha flak jacket, dark blue pants and a long sleeve shirt, with the addition of wearing shorter fingerless gloves with metal plates on the backhand. Sakura Haruno, heir of the Haruno clan and apprentice of Tsunade Senju, has bright pink hair, large green eyes, fair skin and a big forehead. She wore a red top, with black gloves, black, low heel, calf high boots, black shorts underneath a short pink skirt, and pink elbow protectors. Sakura was also armed with a short blade which she wore above her medical pouch. Mito Yuzumaki Namika's heir of the Yuzumaki clan, she had a round face, with her red hair naturally framing both sides of her face. Her attire was a sleeveless kimono-style blouse that was yellow in color and held clothes with a green obi over a short-sleeved mesh shirt with a pair of dark blue shorts and brown shinobi sandals. Nina Yuzumaki Namika's heir of the Namika's clan, she had a round face, with her blonde hair naturally framing both sides of her face. Her attire was a sleeveless kimono-style blouse that was yellow in color and held clothes with a green obi over a short-sleeved mesh shirt with a pair of dark blue shorts and brown shinobi sandals. Mina and Mito looked exactly alike, the only difference was their hair color, Mina had blonde hair, and Mito had red hair. The only Jounin sensei not in the little group was Itachi Achiha, who was standing next to his parents with his Sharingan activated, looking at his T.A.M. Saren Achiha, Menma Yuzumaki Namikas, and Sasuke Achiha, dominate the field. Saren Achiha one of the youngest Achiha in history to activate her Sharingan and Manjekyo Sharingan, she activated her Manjekyo Sharingan the same night Sasuke Achiha did, the reason they activated it was seeing their best friend, brother in Saren's case, die. Saren's Manjekyo Sharingan was split down the middle in three and has an appearance similar to a three-petal flower, just like her mother Naori Achiha, Makoto told her. She had long wavy dark brown hair and cropped bangs hung over her Kanahagakur forehead protector, with only the Kanoha symbol showing on it. She also wore the standard mantle of the Achiha clan, with their crest emblazoned on the back, along with two swords strapped to her left hip by multiple bandages. Makoto told her stories of how her mother looked and acted, so Saren tried to look like her mother as much as she could. Menma Yuzumanki Namikas he didn't inherit any clan leadership from his family, he was pissed off until Minato asked him, if you become a clan head, who will lead this village in the future Menma was a chakra powerhouse, he had more control over the Kaiubi's chakra than any of his sisters, Kishina said it was probably because he had the Kaiubi's soul, as well as its elemental chakra. He looked like Minato and wore a simple white suit of clothing with green trimmings and a hood, with a sword strapped around his waist. Last was Sasuke Achiha, his brother was the heir of the Achiha clan, Sasuke had no wish to become the leader of the Achiha clan. Sasuke's Manjakyo Sharingan looked like a star within a bigger star with a black hole in the middle. People were amazed at how much control over his Sharingan he had, while Sasuke could manifest a his skeleton version of Susanoo for a while, Saren could only hold hers for a short time, because of the pressure the body felt the Susanoo needed a user with a strong body, usually around the age of 16, the user could manifest the Susana for a long time. They wondered how Sasuke was able to hold it for such a long time, Sasuke knew the reason but kept quiet. Sasuke has black eyes as well as black hair with a blue tint to it, his hair is spiky in the back, and he has chin-length bangs that parted down to frame both sides of his face. He wore a navy blue short-sleeved shirt with a high collar and the Achiha crest on the back and white arm warmers. The little spar battle they had ended soon with Team Itachi winning, the other genin groaned at how overpowered their team was. Minato reminded them that the reason why he chose that team was so Itachi could train Sasuke and Saren with their Manjekyo, and so Menma could learn to behave properly under Itachi. The parents looked at the Kanoha 15 and smiled at how strong they were becoming. 
listen up for a second. Minato said, catching everyone's attention, the Chunin exams are almost upon us, all the other villages' eyes will be observing us, since we are the strongest. Show them that us Konoha ninja are not people to be messed with. Now come, let's all go out to eat. I'll pay. The Genin were even more determined now to show their strength at the exams. The very day of the Chunin exams came. We find Menma, Sasuke, Saren, Mina, Mido, and Sakura walking towards the village entrance to evaluate the potential enemies. The sight they saw amused them. Standing on a tree was a short retied wearing a full black bodysuit and a brown gourd on his back, they recognized him as Gara, the container of Shukaku. The girl they recognized as Tamari, Gara's. She has sandy blonde hair which was in four ponytails and teal eyes. Tamari's outfit consists of a single light purple colored, off the shoulders garment that extended two halfway down her thighs, with a scarlet sash tied around her waist, she also had a giant fan on her back. The boy they recognized as Kankuro, Gara's brother. He has makeup all over his face. Kankuro wore a black baggy full bodysuit with a red and yellow circle on the front, he also wore a black hood which covered his head completely, and had cat-like ears and his forehead protector on his forehead. They saw Kankuro holding Konohamaru Suratobi the third Hokage's grandson, he has short spiky brown hair and black eyes, and he wore a long scarf around his neck. Mina swiftly took Konohamaru from Kankuro's hands and appeared back at the group. Konohamaru yelled about how his awesome brothers and sisters were there to save him. The group then looked back at the three Suna ninja, Mido spoke up, what were you doing with the third Hokage's grandson in your hand? Excuse my foolish brother's action, he was too excited for the exams. The short retied spoke up while jumping off the tree. The groups asked each other for their names, even though they already knew the Suna ninja, since they were the Kazukija's children, and Gara was the one tailed Jinchuriki. The voice on top of the tree where Gara was speaking said, Well, since everyone else is giving out their names, I guess I'll give mine. My name is Naruto Ichiha. The talking ninja immediately tensed in shock for not sensing Naruto's chakra. They looked towards the tree and saw a ninja wearing a blank headband, which shows that he is a RONIN RON and will mean that he is a ninja not affiliated to any village, but is a solo ninja. Naruto was wearing a black cloak with red clouds on IT. The Akatsuki were still secret during this time, Jiraiya found out their names, but didn't have any information on their outfits and their plans, other than that they were looking for very powerful ninjas preferably S rank. What shocked the group most was that he had a fully matured Sharingan in one eye and a Manjiku Sharingan in the other. Naruto's Manjiku Sharingan was in the shape of a six-pronged shuriken, there was one Tomo at the top of the shuriken and another at the bottom. Naruto still remembered how he unlocked one Manjiku Sharingan and received an Akatsuki cloak. Flashback. It's been weeks ever since Naruto arrived at Yuzushio. Naruto was heading towards the water source in the village to try and capture some fish, when he saw someone walking towards him from the distance, he tensed at the sight of a black cloak and red clouds. He turned around to go run, but as soon as he turned he felt his body getting pulled towards the unknown Akatsuki member. He smirked at the thought of battling an Akatsuki member, guess I'm not leaving without a fight. He felt his body suddenly stop and turn to face the Akatsuki member, his eyes narrowed at the sight of pain, Nagato's favorite path. How did you find me here Naruto questioned him while gathering chakra towards his lungs. This was my old village before it got destroyed, I am in Yuzumaki. I visit here from time to time, I felt someone's chakra so I followed it, and here I am now. Pain responded with an emotionless tone. Naruto reared his head backwards as he called out Ajutsu's name, fire release. Great fireball he flung his head forward, hoping that this would distract Pain, while he tried to escape, not really in the mood to die. He was surprised when he saw the fireball hit an invisible force between it and Pain, the fireball dispelled soon enough. Tell me, why are you here Pain asked him, acting like the boy did not just try to kill him. Naruto, seeing no reason to lie, answered him truthfully, I'm in Yuzumaki also. Pain was not surprised at this information, I was quite surprised when Abito told me that you escaped his hold. Are you just here to chit chat or is there another reason you haven't attacked me Naruto asked him boldly. Zetsu told me about your fight back at the wave and your heritage. I realize that you and I are not that far apart, we are both orphans, and we were both trained by powerful people. I have been looking for you ever since the day Zetsu told me about you. I'm surprised that you chose this place as your hiding spot. Pain told him, Naruto was surprised that Zetsu told Pain about his parents. Why were you looking for me? Naruto asked with narrowed eyes. When he asked this Pain actually showed a sign of emotion he smirked, I want to give you a personal invitation to join Akatsuki when, he said this he reached into his robe and pulled out a mini-sized Akatsuki cloak. Naruto's eyes widened slightly at this. And if I say no Naruto questioned him. Well if you do then you will die today. Pain responded with no hesitation. I'm no pushover Naruto simply stated. Naruto in front of Pain popped in a cloud of smoke. Pain smirked seeing that the boy would not join without a fight. 
The ground under Payne shook and collapsed inward, Payne saw a hand reach from under his feet with lightning chakra surrounding it. Naruto thought he had Payne, but was surprised when a tongue grabbed him by the waist, even though he had lightning chakra around him. Naruto followed the trail of the tongue and saw a giant chameleon in its place. He saw Payne standing next to Nagato's animal path, Payne was holding a black stick in one hand, his other hand was positioned to Naruto's face. Universal pull Payne yelled while raising up the black stick, so it was pointing directly towards the space between Naruto's eyes. Naruto's eyes widened as he felt the summon unwrap his tongue from around his waist, and his body getting pulled towards Payne at an incredible pace. Is this it? Naruto asked himself when he saw the black stick getting closer and closer. Asura sat in Naruto's mind in a meditative pose, as he watched flashes of Madara and his face in Naruto's thoughts, he smirked knowing that something good was going to happen. Naruto's right eye Sharingan started to twist and change when it finished changing in a couple of seconds, it took the shape of a six-pronged shuriken, with one tomo at the top of the shuriken and another at the bottom. His left eye stayed the same. The Matarasu Naruto said while pumping tons of chakra into the attack, the effects were immediate, the stick exploded from the heat of the black flames, pain, and the animal path had to jump away to avoid being caught by the dot. Naruto fell towards the floor and landed with a thud, he felt his right eye burning and bleeding, he was about to stand up to continue the fight, no matter how much pain his body was going through. Naruto, just accept his offer. You can find out more information on the members and learn how to deal with their abilities as you grow. Asura spoke in his head. Naruto groaned at the thought of having to see Abito again. Wait Naruto said as he saw Pain raise his hands again, I'll join. Naruto sighed in defeat as he saw Pain smirk. You can stay here after you come with me to meet the members Pain said as he gave Naruto a Akatsuki cloak. End of flashback. That night Naruto found out that he unlocked a new stage of the Sharingan, and the person Pain assigned to teach him how to use it was the infamous Inicha. Naruto did not like the idea of being trained by the man that killed his brother. Asura had to tell Naruto that Sin is a powerful ninja, and Naruto would learn a lot from his hands. Naruto was a Konoha for two reasons, Pain gave him a mission telling him that Sasori's contacts said that Orochimaru was planning something for Konoha, so he wanted to make sure that whatever Orochimaru was doing didn't harm the Kaiubi Jinchuriki, and he wanted to see his sister, so this was a bonus mission for Naruto. The group that Naruto just introduced himself to were surprised at the Ichiha part in his name. Saren's eyes narrowed at the Naruto part of his name, she remembered her older brother telling her about her dead twin brother named Naruto. This has to be the biggest coincidence in her life or something weird is going on. The rest of her friends thought that Naruto must have been one of the Ichiha whose parents left after the night of the Ichiha massacre. It was weird that he only had one Manjiku Sharingan. You must be strong if I wasn't able to sense your chakra behind us Menma commented. I would like to think I am Naruto responded in a cocky tone. Naruto hopped down from the tree and started walking away from the group. Aki nonsense Mido said to herself as she watched him walk away. I think he is here for the Chunin exams also, this is my first time seeing a Genin Ronin. Sakura commented. We best be heading our way there too then Sasuke said, they all nodded their heads in agreement and made their way towards the building that is going to hold part one of the exams. Naruto made his way inside the building that a couple of Chunin told him to go to and avoided the door that was placed over a door. He saw every other genin talking and boosting at how much fun they were going to have when they became chunin. As Naruto listened in on some of the conversations a slow smirk started to slowly make its way to his face, I'm going to have so much fun destroying dreams today he thought to himself. Asura, who was aware of the evil intentions Naruto was having, reminded him that they were not here to cause problems. Once all of the genin were in the room a puff of smoke appeared behind the disc in the front of the room, my name is Ibiki Marino, I am the instructor of the first round of the exams, please find the seat that has your name on it and sit down, so we can become immediately yelled a man that has scars on his face and wore a black trench coat. All the genins rushed to their seats eager to start the exams. Naruto was the last person to find his seat, it took him 30 seconds to find it, while all the other genin watched him walk in a slow pace with impatient looks on their face. They wondered if Naruto was stupid or just an annoying brat, because it was obvious that his seat was the only one that was there. Some of the other genins were a little intimidated by Naruto's lone weird looking eye, the other experienced genin knew that it was the Ichiha clan's infamous Sharingan, but they wondered why Naruto was wearing a blank headband. Naruto took a seat in between Menma Yuzumaki Namikas and Sasuke Chiha. Hirama and Indra Naruto heard Asura whisper with a shocked tone. Little brother Asura Sasuke heard Indra say with a regretful tone inside his head. Asura. Menma heard Karama yell in a shocked tone. Sasuke turned on his man Jekyu Sharingan, making Naruto a little jealous at how he had both of them. Naruto gained Menma and Sasuke's attention and put his fist out in front of him. 
they knew what he wanted, so they bumped fist with him, and their bodies automatically put their hands on their laps, and their heads faced the front of the class, as Ibiki explained how the exam was gonna go. The three boys opened their eyes to see that they were in an all-white plane. Behind Naruto Asura was standing staring at the other people in the room. Behind Sasuke Asura's brother Indra Atsutsuki, he has long brown hair cut short on top, with two locks wrapped in bandages framing either side of his face. He wore a high-collared, light-colored kimono held closed by a dark sash. Around the collar of the kimono was adorned with Magatama. Behind Menma was both Asura's and Indra's younger brother Kurama, who was better known as Kaiubi, he is a giant fox with nine long tails. Indra and Kurama already talked to each other because their containers lived in the same village and became best friends. Asura and Naruto both faced Indra and Sasuke. Indra you nonsense. Asura spoke with rage and sadness in his voice. Asura, I thought we already talked about this after the Madara and Hashirama fight. When I was trying to kill you I wasn't in my right mind. Indra looked at his brother with apologetic eyes. I'm here too, you know Kurama grumbled, Asura turned to face Kurama with a big smile on his face. Rats, I think you guys should go, my brothers and I have a lot to talk about Indra ordered while looking at the three kids in the room. The boys glared at him for calling them brats, but respected his wishes and left. When the connection ended Menma was going to try and start a conversation with Naruto, but realized the exams were still going on. The boys soon realized that the point of the exam was to try and steal information from the other ninja in the room. Naruto and Sasuke used their Sharingan to follow the movements of people in the room they thought were smart, while Menma just sat back and watched the other contestants work. When the time was up Ibiki said something that scared most of the genin, before you guys leave there is one more question that you guys need to answer, before I give you guys the question you guys must choose, if you want to answer the question or not. If you chose to not answer the question just leave right now. If you chose to answer the question then you can stay. The genin knew that there was some type of trick behind this. What's the point of giving us a choice? We are all going to say yes Mina yelled from the corner of the room. At this point Ibiki was smirking, well if you answer the question incorrectly, then you will never be able to participate in the genin exams ever again loud cries of what? Was heard from across the room. Raise your hand if you are choosing not to answer it, if you raise your hand, then you and your team are disqualified. No one moved for a while, until one genin raised his hand followed by others. More than half the genin left the room until Naruto's voice rang through the room, can we just get the damn question? I'm kinda on a tight schedule here, and I don't feel like going through your damn mind, games. This seemed to give the other genin a new source of confidence, since no one else raised their hands. Congratulations, you all pass a bicky said with a wide smirk. Silence followed soon after, then complaints about the final question were asked. Ibiki went on to explain how there was no final question he just said that to weed out the weak from the strong. The window was smashed as a flying object entered to reveal Lanko Midarashi, a purple-haired woman wearing a long tan trench coat, with a mesh shirt underneath and a miniskirt. Anko led them to the Forest of Death where she explained that they would be receiving either a heaven or an earth scroll, they had to get the one they didn't have from another genin team in the forest. Before they entered the Forest of Death Anko said one last thing that shocked some of them to the core, oh yeah I almost forgot, killing is allowed. Naruto walked around the forest with his earth scroll inside a basic seal storage seal in his cloak. I should try to be the first one inside he thought with a smirk on his face. Naruto couldn't feel Asura's chakra inside him, which meant that he was still talking with his brothers. That was one big fox he commented remembering the gigantic orange fox, I should get a summon like him. Naruto stopped walking when he felt about nine chakra sources surrounding him, he smirked as he jumped away from a kunai that hurled towards him. You guys can step out now, I know where each of you guys are he paused for effect, I'm a sensor, ninja. The ninja that he sensed jumped out from their hiding spots and landed near Naruto. He looked at their headbands and saw that they were Odo ninjas. This makes my mission easier three of the ninja charged at Naruto ready to kill him, they probably never fought at Chiha before he smirked. When one of them attempted to swing at him, Naruto could have sworn he dodged, but was sent flying into a tree by an invisible force. Naruto fixed his gaze at the weapon around the Odo ninja's arm and saw sound waves coming from it. He frowned as he lifted himself up and dusted off his cloak. I guess Lord Orochimaru was not lying about an Akatsuki member coming here the Odo ninja that attacked him stated, I thought they were stronger than this though. Naruto glared at him, I was attacked with an unknown weapon. What do you expect? The Odo ninja smirked for you to watch your surroundings. Zaku now Naruto was by no means a fool, so he already saw the other Odo ninja approach behind him, so he turned and delivered a swift kick to the boy named Zaku's head. The wave of were sent towards Naruto, before he could do anything he heard a painful sound which sounded like bells reaching his ear. 
The Odo ninja smirked as they saw the enter Naruto. Six of them went to Naruto to finish the job when they were in close range of Naruto. They saw a big smirk on his face as he started glowing white, clone great explosion the Ninjas outside of the forest of death watched a huge explosion appear out of nowhere. When the dust started clearing up only three of the original nine Odo ninjas stood, they had shocked expressions on their faces. It's a shame really they heard a voice coming from a tree nearby and saw the same person they thought they killed leaning against a tree that was surprisingly unharmed, you guys actually fell for that little trick. Naruto turned around towards the direction of the tower, while two clones appeared near him with the scrolls they received from the dead bodies of the Odo ninja. Before Naruto left he turned around to face the three still in shock Odo ninja, tell Orochimaru that it was Naruto Uchiha that did this to his ninja, and I'm coming after him next. With that Naruto started to jump through the trees with his two clones. Saren looked at Orochimaru, the person who ambushed her team with fear. He barely had chakra after his fight with Sasuke and Menma, but he had enough to finish her, he said. Her two teammates were behind her laying on the floor not moving, Sasuke fainted after the snake sage gave him a hickey, and Menma fainted after getting hit with a five-pronged seal to the stomach. Damn it, this is a bad time for me to be running low on chakra. I should have listened to Itachi sensei and advanced my chakra control. She had few options, and time was running low. Before she could do anything she saw a long sword come from Orochimaru's mouth at inhuman speed and appear through her stomach. She looked down at the sword in her stomach with tearful eyes from the pain. Before either of them could blank Naruto appeared in front of Saren, with both his eyes holding the Manjekyo Sharingan, Naruto did not look pleased. Indra burst I know the name sounds lame lol, but I couldn't think of any better name for it. This is unique to Naruto's Manjekyo, you will find out more about it later on. The sword in Saren's stomach exploded in a burst of pure chakra, nothing remained of the sword. Saren started falling towards the floor, but a Naruto clone caught her. The real Naruto stared at Orochimaru with a pissed gaze, but quickly changed it to a passive one. Well well, if it isn't little Naru Orochimaru said with a disgusting smile. It's time for you to die, pedophile Naruto said as he pulled out his sword. Orochimaru frowned at being called a pedophile, but then smirked as he started to sink to the ground, not wanting Naruto to actually carry out the threat. The Madarasu Naruto called out, when the black flames came in contact with Orochimaru he melted into a mound of mud, Naruto realized that it was just a damn mud clone. He turned towards his sister, she was unconscious. He ordered the clones to carry Menma and Sasuke, while he helped Saren. Naruto started walking towards that tower, and soon reached a cave he entered it and placed the three unconscious ninja on the floor. He found out that they needed an earth scroll, so he took out his spare and placed it next to them. He looked at the place where the wound she received was and saw that it was already healed thanks to her Senju and Yuzumaki blood. He stared at her closed eyes and started to debate on whether or not he should switch eyes with her, don't, thanks to you being both Yuzumaki and Senju, you heal way faster than the normal Achiha, so you won't be going blind anytime soon, same could be said for your sister. Naruto sighed, he was glad that Asura was back with him. Alright then, I think it's time for me to take my leave. Before Naruto left he planted a kiss on his sister's forehead. When Naruto entered the tower he found out that he was the first ninja to finish the second part of the exams. He read the walls and realized that he was supposed to open the scrolls in the center of the room. When he opened the scrolls a Kanoha ninja with a scar across his nose appeared out of it and started to explain some shit to him that he didn't really bother listening to. Haruka the ninja that Naruto summoned was surprised that Aranin is the first to enter the tower, guess I should never underestimate Ichiha. He frowned as he stared at the boy, in the meeting before the exams the Hokage told them to keep an eye on Naruto, because he is a Chiha that was raised outside the village. Naruto just scuffed and walked away completely ignoring Aruka, while he walked through the hallways in the enormous tower he met up with a masked Kanoha ninja that he recognized as Kakashi Haddock. Flashback. An eight-year-old Naruto stood next to Ibito Ichiha on top of a grassy hill surrounded by trees. Alright Naruto, show me if you can do this so I can show you the next one Ibito commanded Naruto. Hi, Abito sensei came Naruto's response. Naruto crouched down into a low position and started to send chakra towards his palm. Sparks started flying off Naruto's hands until the black form of lightning shrouded Naruto's entire hands. Naruto ran towards a tree and yelled, Chidori the entire tree exploded in a wave of splinters as Naruto first went through it. Abito was impressed by Naruto's control over the as he walked up behind him. Sensei Abito's ears perked up, before I learn the next, will you tell me how you created the Chidori Abito frown behind his mask, as memories started to invade his mind. My old teammate Kakashi Haddock created Chidori, not me. Naruto knew who Kakashi Haddock was, but didn't know that Abito was his old teammate. Before Naruto's mind could start wandering off Abito spoke, now the next I'm going to teach you I bet you already know who created it. The Jutsu's name is Rasengan Naruto watched in amazement as a blue orb started to appear in Abito's hand. End of flashback. 
So you made it Kakshi stated as he flipped a page in the book he was holding, since there is about 4 more days until the next part starts you have to stay here. There is a training ground here, it's not that big, and there is a buffet. Your team room Naruto was glad he didn't have a team, will be given to you when you reach the sleeping corridors. Bakashi pointed to a map on the wall near them, and continued to walk towards the way Naruto came from. I guess I could use a snack right now Naruto commented as he went to find the kitchen. Four days later. Standing in the middle of a gigantic room were all the ninjas that passed the forest of death. A man named Hei Echo has brown short hair, wearing the standard Konoha Shinobi outfit, flak jacket and regular Shinobi sandals. He also carried a katana with a rectangular handguard strapped over his back. Hei Echo was the protector of this part of the exams. The fourth Hokage explained how they were going to be matched against each other in a 1v1 battle where killing is allowed but not recommended. Bain I don't really want to go through every single person's fight, but I will try and give a short summary. Naruto's fight will be last. The people that are not listed either did not pass the forest of death or forfeited. 1. Ichiha Sasuke vs Yuzumaki Namaka's Mina Sasuke won the battle, he used a curse mark the curse mark, but was not affected by it, thanks to Indra. Mina was standing her ground while using the Kayubi Chakra, but Sasuke Susanoo was too strong. 2. Abura Mishino vs Abumi Zaku same fight as canon. 3. Kenkuro vs Tsurugi Misumi same fight as canon. 4. Haruno Sakura vs Yamanaka Ino it was a draw. The fight was more intense because both of them took their training seriously. 5. Tamari vs Tenten same fight as canon. 6. Nara Shikamaru vs Tsuchi Kin same fight as canon. 7. Hayuga Niji vs Hayuga Hinata Niji wins. Hinata was much stronger because Menma helped her gain confidence. 8. Rock Lee vs Akamichi Choji Rock Lee won. 9. Ichiha Seren vs Yuzumaki Namakism Tio This fight resulted in a draw. The fight was similar to Sasuke and Mina's fight, but Saren could not hold her Susanoo for long and doesn't have the curse mark. 10. Yuzumaki Namaka's Menma vs Inuzuka Kiba Menma 1. Before Menma entered the battle he had his dad look at the seal that was on top of the one holding Kaiubi, Minato recognized the seal as being the five-pronged seal and released it. 11. Z this is the A apostrophe S the fourth rakage, son, Z looks a lot like A, versus T-I-K-A this is an A character who is a part of the village Iowa, Z wins. Z is a chill person that loves and respects power. 12. Amoy vs TIA another Ak character who is part of the village Iwa, I am bad at making names. Amoy wins. 13. Kuritsuchi vs Kari Kuritsuchi wins. Everyone was waiting for the next match to happen. They already knew who it was going to be, since only two people hadn't settled yet. The board started flashing before ending up on Naruto Uchiha vs Gar. I have to fight a blood crazy for the first round Naruto was actually surprised. The Kanoha ninjas stood next to each other. Saren was examining the Naruto person, that is the guy that I saw before I blacked out during our fight with Orochimaru Saren commented. All of the Kanoha ninja eyes landed on her. So he is the one that saved us, he must be strong Menma said with excitement. Sasuke scoffed, we weakened Orochimaru, so we did all the work. Sasuke was pissed off that Orochimaru defeated his team, and they had to be saved by Asura's I-N-C-A-R-N-A-T-I-O and Naruto. S hot thought one of the Kanoha girls with a blush. Just shut up and watch the battle Itachi said, making all of the Kanoha ninja look back towards the battle ring. Alright when I say start you guys may begin. Remember killing is allowed but not recommended. If one of you guys surrender the other must stop his attacks, or else I'll have to jump in and force him to stop hate explained, while going through a wave of coughs. Anyone having last minute thoughts he asked looking between Gara and Naruto, when neither of them said anything he jumped back, start. Both Naruto and Gara stood without any movement, they just looked at each other. Try not to anger him. Shukaku has taken a very evil road in his life without anyone to guide him. From what I heard he is violent and ill-tempered Asura warned. Naruto chose to tune Asura out so he could enjoy the battle. Mother will enjoy the taste of your blood Gara's tone sent shivers down some of the audience's backs. Naruto kept his face impassive while he stared into Gara's eyes with his Sharingan spinning. San started to exit out of Gara's gourd. So I guess you are going to make the first move Naruto commented as he ran a hand through his jet black gravity defying hair. San started to rush towards Naruto at amazing speed, Naruto started to jump around in the air, trying to evade the sand hands that tried to grab him. He is not going to be able to beat Gara Kurunai stated, Gara is in the damn bingo books. Some of the other ninjas around her nodded their heads in agreement. His name, why does he have the same name as my dead brother Saren kept thinking. Itachi was thinking along the same lines as Saren. Shisui told Itachi about his dead brother Naruto. The whole crowd was wondering why Gara was attacking the side opposite of Naruto's, but they thought nothing of it, thinking that it was just Gara's strategy. 
In Gara's point of view the sand finally caught Naruto. Gara gave a very creepy smirk as he watched the sand cover Naruto's entire body, sand coffin Gara was interrupted by Tamari's yell. Tamari watched as Gara wrapped his own sand around his body and frowned, I thought that was an offensive one she recognized that he was about to use it on himself when he gave that smirk of his. Tamari immediately knew what was happening before Gara could finish, saying that she yelled, Gara, it's just a dot. Gara's eyes widened as he expelled Chakra out of his body to remove the dot he stared at Naruto, who was leaning on the arm of the statue in the room while he sat on it in a meditative position. Gara was actually surprised that Tamari just saved his life, even though he threatened to take hers so many times, thank you Tamari he silently thought. I guess you have someone who cares about you Naruto said as he turned his head to where Tamari was standing, Tamari I would appreciate it if you allowed Gara to fight his own battles. The Konoha ninja chuckled at Kurinai's reaction to seeing that Gara was actually underneath the whole time. Kurinai gained a smile on her face, I guess Naruto might have a chance after all. I am going to make sure that your death is painfully slow Gara promised. Naruto actually chuckled at the thought of that. Naruto wanted to painfully say, and how is a crazy brat like you going to kill an amazing s rank ninja like me? But Asura quickly told him to keep his mouth shut. Don't worry Asura, if he does transform into Shikaku I'll just introduce him to the power of Susanoo Naruto told him, he knew that Asura didn't want him to fight the unstable Jinchuriki. Asura sighed, feeling a headache coming on, that's what I'm worried about you damn brat. You only had the Susanoo for about 4 days, and you are already acting like you know everything about it. Before Naruto could come up with a comeback a wave of sand was headed towards him. He heard Gar yell, sand burial. Naruto just sighed as he leaned his head back, pursed his lips together and flung his head forward, letting a wave of flames exit his mouth. The crowd watched in amazement as the white flames were sent towards the sand wave. He must have a high affinity for fire Itachi muttered as he watched the white flames coat the sand wave. Blast started to surround the wave of sand. Seems like your supply of sand is no more Naruto chuckled. Gara just stared at Naruto with an emotionless gaze and said, only the top layer of sand turned to glass. Naruto stared at the sand wave and realized that Chakra was surrounding the sand by layers. This fight is boring, I need to finish it quickly Naruto thought. Naruto used the seal I taught you. We need to make sure that my little brother stops hurting this boy's mind. Asura told him. Naruto growled at the thought the seal Asura taught him, it was like the only thing Asura bothered teaching him. When he starts to transform I'll do it Naruto's short reply came. Naruto watched as the glass around the sand started to crack to reveal a new wave of sand. Now dot let's try this again Gara began as he started to coat the sand with more chakra to make sure it would withstand Naruto's fire, sand burial. Naruto didn't move as the sand wave leaped over him, before the sand wave crushed Naruto, a black aura surrounded him as a rib cage started to form around him. The Konoha ninjas start to gasp like fish. Seems like we have another Susanoo user in the world Itachi muttered. I wonder which village he will choose to join Kakashi commented. It was a well-known fact that the only reason why Ronins came to the Chunin exams or Jounin exams was to be seen by the villages and try to join one. Like Hokage-sama said, be careful around him since he is a Chiha that was raised outside of the village Asuma warned them. The Jenin in the group were just focused on the battle going in the arena while the adults talked. Naruto stood up while the sand retracted back to Gara. Naruto still had his Susanoo ribcage activated. He ran towards Gara at a low speed while thinking on where he was going to strike. He ordered a Susanoo arm to attack Gara, but a sand arm grabbed a hold of it. Naruto raised an eyebrow, so this is your ultimate defense he muttered examining the arm that was holding his Susanoo. Naruto just finished the damn battle and used the damn seal, so I can talk to my brother Asura was getting really cranky. Naruto's Susanoo disappeared while he took a leap towards Gara and sent a punch towards his head. Sand immediately appeared at the area Naruto was going to punch, too slow he thought. Naruto bent over as a sand arm reached out to grab him, he quickly reached into his cloak and pulled out his sword and sent some lightning chakra into. People in the crowd watched in amazement when the white sword started to gain black lighting crackles around it. Naruto suddenly disappeared and was behind Gara. he placed his sword back inside his cloak as a jolt of black lightning exploded on Gara's sand shield. I have to remember to thank Kisum sensei for teaching me Naruto thought. Flashback. Pain introduced Naruto to all of the Akatsuki MEMBERS the original members, except for Itachi, who is replaced by Sinichiha. Also Danzo Shimura is part of the Akatsuki, Minato found out about him stealing, so Danzo escaped with all his root army and sold them to Orochimaru for some DNA samples in return. So basically Danzo is secretly working with Orochimaru. Danzo thinks what he is doing is protecting Kanoha in the shadows. Naruto, your partner will be Sinichiha Pain said Dot Kisum's partner is now Danzo, they all know about Danzo's implants, so he won't have to hide the skills he has with them. 
Naruto just nodded but on the inside he was raging with anger. Nagato knew that Sin killed Naruto's BROTHER since Zetsu told him, so why pair him up with the nonsense Naruto wondered. Pain sensed Naruto's anger, so he decided to reason with him, the only reason why I paired you with Sin is because he will be able to teach you how to use your eyes properly. Naruto said nothing as he glared at Sin, who was just staring at a wall behind Pain in deep thought. Naruto knew that Pain was just using mind games on him, if he wanted someone to teach me how to use my eyes, he could have just told Abito to do it he scuffed as he stared at Tobi who he knew was Abito. Pain gave out the rest of the people to their PARTNERS same partners. Except Kisum Danzo and Naruto Sin. While everyone started to leave to start collecting some bounty, Naruto felt a hand placed on his back. He turned to see it was a blue fish looking guy with a gigantic sword on his back, Kisum Hashigaki. I'm sorry but it seems that we were not properly introduced. I know the rest of the people here except for Toby Brat, Leader Sama and Zetsu, since they are in the bingo book, but it seems that you are not exactly in the bingo book. Kisum concluded with a raised hand. Names Naruto Ichiha Naruto said as he raised his hand to shake the other man's hand. It looks like you got partnered up with that silent Ichiha Kisum laughed, and Naruto couldn't help but grin, it seems like some people here are friendly. Ask him to teach you Asura said. Naruto sighed inwardly, he didn't know what was so cool about whipping a damn sword. I know this is so soon, but I found a sword and was wondering if you would be able to teach me how to use it Naruto said while scratching the back of his head. Kisum agreed to teach the brat, finding out that his sword and Naruto's have the same ability to be able to absorb chakra. End of flashback. He turned back around to face Gara and saw his sand slowly start to surround him again. Naruto crunched down and did a couple of hand seals with his left hand and gripped his right hand black lightning started to surround it. The Kanoha ninja gasped at the sight and slowly turned to look at Kakashi. Kakashi slowly lowered his book to stare at some damn brat, holding his precious Jidori. He must have stolen it when he saw Sasuke do it, earlier he concluded while remembering Sasuke from it when fighting Mina, but he didn't put enough chakra to kill her. Naruto suddenly appeared in front of Gara in a low crunch down position. Gara's sand immediately smacked Naruto away. Naruto groaned as he got busted through a wall. His Chidori was still activated, but there was a long lightning line that extended from the Chidori and through Gara's shoulder. The crowd was silent as they watched Gara slowly look down at the hole in his shoulder with a shocked expression as the lighting sword faded away. Is dot this my blood Gara questioned. From shock to rage, sand instantly started to surround Gara as he started to transform. The Naruto that was sent through the wall exploded in a puff of smoke. The ground underneath Gara crumbled as Naruto popped out from it holding a black Rasengan. Gara instantly received a Rasengan to the stomach and was flung in the air. Naruto jumped up after him and flashed through a set of hand seals and smacked a hand on Gara's belly, heavenly biju seal he muttered. There was a flash of white light as the seal that was on Gara's stomach started to change. Asura took the time to transfer his soul into Gara's mind. A gigantic sand raccoon looking figure was in the middle of a barren land, Asura appeared in front of the beast known as Shukaku. Who dares to appear in front of the great sand beast Shukaku yelled. Your older, very pissed brother Asura responded. Shukaku's eyes squinted as he tried to make out the figure in front of him. He instantly realized who it was and his eyes widened. I am very disappointed in you. Making you go crazy just because of your damn temper. Asura said in a quiet voice as a cage started to appear around Shukaku. Asura started to fade away, I'll come back later, but for now I want you to sit back and think about what you did. Now you won't be able to terrorize Gara again. Naruto landed gracefully on the ground while letting Gara land face first into the ground. When Gara didn't get up to Mari and Kankuro jumped down and started to run towards him. They expected him to go wild because of Shukaku, but he didn't. Gara started to grunt and whisper, I can't hear mother. The medics quickly ran to the field after Naruto was announced winner. After everyone got over the battle a very pissed M.I.N.A.T.O. since Naruto used his call them over to pick out numbers from a box for the next part of the exams that would happen in a month's time. Finals matchups. 1. Kankuro vs. Abura Mishino. 2. Nara Shikamaru vs. Tamari. 3. Rock Lee vs. E. 4. Yuzumaki Namika's Menma vs. Asuka Chiha. 5. Amoi vs. Kuritsuchi. 6. Naruto vs. Hayuganiji. When all the teams exited the building Naruto's stomach started to growl, he blushed and rubbed his stomach. Yes I should get something to eat before I meet up with Sin Naruto thought as he walked around the village with his Sharingan activated, most of the people kept staring at him. Naruto saw a place that had the sign, Ichiraku Raymond the place, seemed to be booming with business dots since the family eats there. Naruto took a seat and waited patiently for someone to take his order. A beautiful young lady soon came to serve him. He just ordered whatever they recommended for a first-time buyer. 
When Naruto's order came he tasted it and almost dropped his chopsticks, the waiter looked at him with concern. This dot this is the food of the gods Naruto thought, while immediately ordering at least 10 more bowls of the same thing. Naruto decided that he would keep Sin waiting, so he could explore more of the food places Konoha had to offer. He soon stumbled across a place named Akamichi's Barbecue he chose to enter, and immediately regretted it as a bell jingled then all eyes landed on him. The only people he recognized were the group of Konoha Ninja and the Hokage and his wife. He chose to ignore them when he went to order his meal, and he sat down as far away from them as possible. Naruto felt a huge chakra source coming towards him. He felt the person raising their hands to touch him, but he quickly grabbed the person's fingers with a pair of chopsticks. He didn't move as he kept his focus on the food before him. He heard a grunt behind him, so what's an Akatsuki member doing in the village hidden in the leaves? Naruto stayed silent, damn, can't I ever catch a break. He removed the chopsticks from the person's fingers and continued to eat. Brad are you going to answer my question or not he heard the person behind him ask. Naruto turned to face the person that dared disrupt his meal, he felt a groan coming up. Standing behind him was none other than then the famous Jiraiya the Toad Sage, standing tall with his long white hair. It's no surprise that he would find out what the Akatsuki looked like Asura commented. Naruto couldn't help but agree. Everyone's eyes were on the two ninja having an intense stare down. Yureya sensei what seems to be the problem? You just came from your mission, and you're already causing problems Minato asked as he and the rest of the Konoha ninja started walking towards the two. Minato, you remember that little group we heard about, the one that was recruiting s rank criminals. Well I had a little scuffle with one of their members that tried to get me to join, so now I know what they look like Jiraiya finished looking at Minato with a serious face. Minato slowly put the pieces together and turned to face the group he was treating to lunch, sorry guys, it seems like my duty as Hokage is never finished he flashed them his famous smile. He walked in between Jiraiya and Naruto, then placed a hand on their shoulders and flashed away into his office. What the hell yelled Naruto, feeling like he was going to vomit. He turned to glare at the two S rank ninja, why did you guys bring me here? You are a part of a group full of S rank criminals, why else do you think I would bring you here Minato asked while taking a seat behind his desk and dismissing the anbu that were guarding the room. What proof do you have that I am a part of this group Naruto asked them, feeling a smug smirk creeping up on his face. Minato stared at Jiraiya, hoping that he had the answer to this question. Jiraiya started to scratch the back of his head in a nervous manner, then he instantly thought of one, well the outfit that you are wearing right now. I could have found this anywhere Naruto responded with no hesitation. After seeing that he had nothing else to back up his statement Naruto started to walk out, well seeing as you guys have nothing more to say dot I'll be taking my leave Naruto finished as he started to walk out the door waving his hand as a sign of goodbye. Now hold on there Naruto Naruto slowly turned around to face a now smug Jiraiya and a silent Minato, where did you get that ring from? It looks similar to Kisum's he finished while Minato reached under his disc. Minato pulled out a three-pronged kunai and flung it at Naruto who disappeared in a puff. Shit it was a clone Minato exclaimed. He instantly called out his anbu and ordered them to find Naruto. The real Naruto was running as fast as he could away from the village to meet up with Sin. He finally found the area Sin told him to meet up at and saw him meditating calmly near a water stream. Shinichiha is a young man with black messy hair and two bangs hanging on either side of his face. He wore an emotionless face. You're finally back Sin has a deep mature voice. Naruto sent a glare at his partner. I don't know if I will be able to go back for the finals Naruto sighed as he explained what happened to Sin. Hanoha is a cocky village they are probably not expecting you to come back, but if you do there is a low chance of them doing anything about it, since they will have visiting cages Sin concluded while standing up and opening his eyelids to stare at Naruto with his dark eyes. Naruto still wore his glare as Sin walked towards him, Naruto unconsciously activated both his Manjekyo Sharingan. Naruto Sin sighed while looking at the younger boy, I still don't understand this hatred you have on me. Naruto kept his mouth shut as he stared at Sin who spoke after a minute of silence, well it's good to see that you finally have your other man Jekyo Sharingan. Now I can teach you better. Hey Chan, let's get to training then instead of talking Naruto responded, settling for a blank stare at Sin. Before we do I have some news from leader Sama Naruto's interest raised, Kisum and Danzo were assigned to bring in the YONBI 4 tails, but under some complications, they ended up killing the of the Yonbi, instead of subduing him, also the rebel forces in Kiri have killed the of the SANBI 3 tails. Also as you already know Kisum ran into Jiraiya who now knows how we look, so we lose the element of surprise. Naruto took some time to digest the information, how long until the Yonbi reforms. Leader Sama estimated it to be about 3 years. He says that we can use the time off to train and collect bounties for our founding, unless he needs us in informed him. Three years isn't so bad Naruto thought. Alright so let's get to training before the month is over. 
When the finals come I'll go back to Konoha to make sure Orochimaru doesn't harm the Kaiubi Naruto said, hiding the real reason for why he wanted to go back to the village. Sin gave a small nod as both of them started to leave the area. One month later. The grand arena that was to hold the finals of the Chunin exams. In the middle of the field 12 people stood. Naruto changed his attire hoping that the Hokage wouldn't bother him, he only wore black Anbu pants, with his sword strapped behind his back. Most of the people in the stands were wondering who he was. Inside the cage box Minato was staring hard at the shirtless black-haired contestant with a frown on his face, so the nonsense actually decided to show his face. Inoki the third Tsuchikage floated near Minato. Inoki is a very short old man with a triangular beard and a mustache that has angular corners, a big red nose and thick eyebrows. He wears a green and yellow coat with a red collar. He came to see his granddaughter fight and talk to Minato. The fourth Reikage sat near Minato. As a tall dark-skinned man with a large muscular build, with his white hair combed back. He wears his cage Heiorian hat without a shirt underneath, displaying his hulking physique. He came to see his son fight and talk to Minato. Rasa the fourth Kazakiage sat near the other cages. Rasa has auburn hair and dark eyes. He wore a simple black jacket and pants with mesh armor underneath. I can't wait to see Z crush all his opponents A boasted with a large smirk on his face, hoping that the training he gave Z would pay off. After hearing the name Z a large grin appeared on Minato's face, during the battle between Naruto and Gara, he didn't see Naruto use strength or much to jutsu. Breakage Dono, would you be alright if I made a small change with Z's opponent he questioned the other cage. The FFT, any opponent you place to go up against Z will be crushed A said with pride. Minato gave a small nod to A. Minato stood up and went to the opening in the cage box, he gave a speech about the battles and the other villages. Before we commence with the matches there will be a change up with the matches. The first match will now be Z vs Naruto Ichiha. The crowd started to murmur wondering who Naruto was. Naruto smirked at the thought of fighting Z. The other genin on the ground were moved into the competitor box, while Naruto and Z were told to stay. After they were given the rules of the match which was basically none they were told to start. The crowd looked down at the two shirtless boys, one with a skinny form and the other with a bigger form. Z was holding a sword that was flickering with a black colored lightning, I was hoping to get a chance to fight you after your battle with Gara he said with a burst of speed as he jumped towards Naruto. Naruto said nothing as he activated his Sharingan. He saw Z's sword coming at him so he reached over his back as he grabbed his sword and blocked an incoming strike from Z. They both stared at each other in the eyes. Z jumped back and activated his lightning armor with a smirk as he disappeared out of view and reappeared behind Naruto. Naruto sensed the chakra behind him turned around to block a strike from Z. They both grunted as they tried to overwhelm the other. Naruto saw a crack start to appear on Z's sword, idiot thought he could come and fight me with a basic sword Naruto thought as he sent a wave of wind chakra into his sword. Z's eyes widened, he didn't know Naruto had wind chakra, he jumped out the way letting his sword get shredded to pieces. Naruto placed his sword away with a smug look on his face. He was surprised when he felt pain in his stomach, he looked down to see Z surrounded by black lightning chakra. Z had his fist on Naruto's stomach, such speed. Naruto thought with wide eyes. Z removed his fist from Naruto's stomach, then sent a chakra-filled kick to Naruto's side, the crowd watched in amazement as Naruto was sent crashing into the walls of the arena. Weak Z commented. That's my boy Z exclaimed with pride in his eyes. The other occupants in the room were amazed at Z's speed and strength. Seems like Naruto was all talk and no bite the fourth Kazakiage thought. If he was placed against my sweet Kuritsuchi, he would have been swiftly dealt with Anoki muttered with jealousy. It's okay Anoki don't know, your granddaughter will have her chance to shine in her a match Minato told the smaller cage with a grin. They all turned to the battlefield when they heard gasps. Z ran towards the wall that Naruto crashed in, he sent a fist towards Naruto's head, but was surprised Naruto gripped it with his own hand. Damn I thought I had him with my last attacks thought with disappointment. When Z looked towards Naruto's face he stared into Naruto's Manjekyo Sharingan. The crowd gasped when Z jumped back but was grabbed by a skeleton arm and flung across the arena. Naruto walked out the hole he created in the wall and dusted himself off. This guy is fast Naruto thought while well, he thought of a plan to defeat Z. Naruto felt Z's chakra race towards him, Z appeared above Naruto, hoping to catch him by surprise he smirked when he saw that Naruto didn't move. He attempted to bring his foot down on Naruto's head, but Naruto jumped away and allowed his Susanoo ribcage to take the blow of Z's kick. The Z in Naruto's sight disappeared in a puff of crackles, a hail of lightning chakra enchanted shuriken were thrown towards Naruto from different corners. Naruto was cornered so he used one of his favorites, Indra burst all, the shuriken exploded in a burst of chakra from their insides that completely obliterated them. Flashback. In a clearing Naruto and Sin sat meditating. 
Sin, I have a question Naruto's voice said, breaking through the silence, do your Manjekyo Sharingans have any unique features? Sin's eyelids opened as he stared at Naruto, yes mine has a unique to it, why do you ask he responded not giving any information about WTH the unique was exactly. Well I found out I have one Sin's eyes narrowed, when I used it I said the name, even though no one else ever used it. Well you are born with a uniqueness, so your brain is basically programmed to do this in your time of need Sin informed. How did you find out the limits of yours? Mine seems to be a defensive one, but I think I can make it an offensive one too Naruto replied. Mine is not an ninjutsu Sin informed. Naruto looked at Sin with his manjekyo, Indra burst he hoped it would work, but he stared at Sin and saw nothing happen. Sin raised an eyebrow, I felt another chakra try to overpower mine, but it was too small he started as he pulled out a kunai and flung it at Naruto. Naruto's eyes widened, Indra burst before the kunai got a chance to penetrate Naruto's forehead, it exploded in a burst of chakra. Seems like the is only able to use a certain amount of chakra to make the object that is targeted explode, the chakra behind the has to be able to overpower it Sin examined, I guess it can't do much. Naruto sent a glare at Sin for basically calling his unique weakness, but Naruto had to admit to Sin that information was useful. End of flashback. The crowd watched in amazement as the shuriken exploded without Naruto even moving. Naruto looked around and saw three identical ZS, he immediately recognized the real one. You may be fast Naruto praised as he pulled out his sword, but your movements cannot escape my eyes Naruto yelled as he jumped in the air towards the real Z. Gugaku sat in the crowds with a smirk as he watched Naruto battle, a true cha. I hope Minato-sama decides to persuade him into joining the village. Saren sat near Fugaku as she watched Naruto fight, she was impressed to say the least. Before Naruto reached Z, the bigger male jumped in the air directly above Naruto, guillotine dropped Z yelled as he brought his feet down on Naruto and hoped to knock him out, but was surprised when Naruto popped in a puff of smoke. Z turned around and blocked a punch from Naruto, they both then engaged in a battle of Tujutsu Z was landing more hits than Naruto was, this guy is definitely not a damn gen and Naruto grunted as he received a punch in the stomach that launched him across the arena. Z did not stop his attack as he jumped on Naruto and started to repeatedly beat him with his fist. When he felt that it was enough he stood up to admire his work. Z was about to be pronounced the winner when the Naruto in the hole popped in a puff of smoke. Another Naruto appeared in front Z with a black Jidori in his hand, which expanded and entered into Z's chest just barely missing his heart. It was a good battle while it lasted Z, I am glad to have been able to fight a strong opponent like you Naruto started speaking as the sword version of the Chidori started disappearing, leaving a hole in Z's chest, but in the end my eyes were too powerful for you to escape. Z dropped face forward to the ground, losing consciousness. The crowd was silent as they watched nurses rush to the field to carry Z out and Naruto get announced as the winner. The Kazuki edge smirked, there won't be a better time than this he thought as he jumped out of his chair he gave a sign and feathers started to fall from the sky. Kazuki edge don't know, what is the meaning of this Minato said as he reached inside of his rob. Oh, shut up, idiot dot the Kazuki edge sneered as he ripped off his own face to reveal the face of Orochimaru. Snakes launched towards Minato out of Orochimaru's sleeves, but they were quickly sliced by A's hands as he activated his lightning armor. Anoki floated himself near Minato's side, Kanoha has been getting stronger over the years. Me and A don't know have been thinking about launching a surprise attack on Kanoha Minato tensed, but Anoki waved a dismissive hand, we thought of it, but realized that it would not really benefit us because of our losses in the third ninja war. So me and A don't know agreed on giving you an invite into our alliance. We will help you with this battle as a sign of our peace. Minato gave them a look of gratitude as they took the battle to the roof of the cage box. Minato stared over the village and watched his Jounin fight and give orders, while a group of Jenin followed the dead Kazakuja's kids. Damn I can't fight three cages at the same time Orochimaru frowned as he prepared himself to use his trump card. He slammed his hands on the ground and seals started to appear, Ido Tensei four coffins appeared from the ground. The first coffin opened to reveal a tall man with waist-length black hair. The man wore dark red armor worn over a simple black suit with sandals. This man is none other than Hashirama Senju. The second coffin opened to reveal a fair-skinned man with white shaggy hair. The man wore blue armor with a distinctive white fur collar over a simple black suit. This man is Tabarama Senju. The third coffin opened to reveal a woman with long bright red hair and large pupilless eyes. She wore an elaborate high-collared kimono with the Izushi Agakur symbol on the back of the opi, which was tied around her woman Mito Yuzumaki. The last coffin opened to reveal a teen with short unkempt dark colored hair and black eyes. He wore the standard attire of the Achiha clan which includes a high-collared dark-colored outfit, along with a sword strapped to the right side of the back of his shoulder. This teen was Shisui Achiha. The four reanimated ninjas looked around with their eyes, and their heads were not able to move, what is this Shisui asked, seeing three cages stand in front of him. 
I only feel half my chakra Hashirama noted. Hashirama is that your voice I hear Mito question not being able to face her dead husband. Before they were able to talk, someone landed in front of them. The person wore a black jumpsuit, mesh segments over the lower portions of his limbs, and a green gauntlet that covered much of his right arm. Here is in Saratobi is the new arrival. Sarah.yo you have turned old Tabarama commented with a slight chuckle. Saratobi stared up in shock at his old sensei, Hirachimaru I thought I sensed your chakra.yo you went too far this time. Hello sensei, I see you came to try to finish what you couldn't before. Hirachimaru sneered. Saratobi sama, we will take on the reanimated ninja while you defeat Hirachimaru Minato said as he pulled out a pair of three pronged kunai. They all heard a crackle, and Orochimaru jumped out the way to avoid being hit by a full-powered Chidori Naruto landed where Orochimaru was standing, he was wearing his Akatsuki cloak. I'll take on the snake while you guys handle the others Naruto said in a commanding tone. The FFT, step out the way, but this battle is way out of your ledge. If you could barely handle my son, what makes you think you could handle a cage-level ninja A question, still salty from Z's loss to Naruto. HN, I didn't use much chakra against Z I was saving it, just in case Orochimaru decided to show his face Naruto informed them as he kept his eye on Orochimaru. So you are the Akatsuki member Jiraiya told me about. Don't worry I dunno I'll take care of them, both Sirotobi said underestimating Naruto. Old man if you don't stay out the way you will die Naruto threatened. Bukuku, Naruto you talk big for a little brat Orochimaru chuckled. Shisui, who stayed quite the whole time, spoke up, Naruto Uchiha. Naruto looked at the back of the person who was saying his name. He walked to face the person and was surprised to say the least. My name is Shisui Uchiha, I know this may sound weird, but this is true. I'm you older brother Naruto was still staring at his brother with a shocked expression on his face, he noted that his eyes are completely black. Orochimaru was bored of the little family reunion and made the reanimated ninja attack. Shisui and Naruto jumped into an extreme battle, Orochimaru and Saratobi started fighting, while the cages took off the other reanimated ninja. I'm curious Naruto spoke while evading all of Shisui's slashes, why would Orochimaru summon you? The other ninja I understand but you don't even have your Sharingan. Shisui just give a little smirk as he disappeared from sight reappearing behind a shocked Naruto who wasn't able to follow his chakra with his Sharingan, I think he summoned me to fight, Minato Sama Shisui said as he brought his blade down, Naruto had to roll out the way to escape. Shisui flashed through a chain of hand seals, fire style. Fireball Jutsu Naruto watched the gigantic flame come at him. Higher style. Flamethrower Naruto's flamethrower seemed to be non-stop until it overpowered Shisui's. Naruto immediately turned around to block a strike from Shisui's blade, I'm curious, now Shisui said as they both tried to overpower the other's blade, where is my sister? She is alive but doesn't know who I am. I was planning on telling her when I become strong enough to destroy certain people, I don't know if she figured it out on her own though Naruto informed. Well seeing as I said you are my brother in front of Minato-sama, I'm willing to bet she will find out soon who you are. Shisui said with a small grin. Naruto gave him his own grin, he finally got to meet his brother. Right now he was enjoying every single moment of their battle, there was so much that he wanted to tell him and ask him, but he would not be able to say anything, since they are not the only people there. Shisui's face started to crack, well it seems like Orochimaru is losing chakra, I feel my own beginning to decrease. Shisui said with a frown. Naruto's blade burst in a wave of wind chakra, completely obliterating Shisui's blade, as he rammed it into his chest Shisui felt no pain. Naruto before I leave I need to tell you something Shisui said as his body started to get ripped apart by the wind chakra on Naruto's blade, the reason for why I don't have my Sharingan is because a man named Danzo took them from me, rendering me blind. As I fought my teammate Sin with Itachi's help I couldn't really see him, but I'm willing to bet that if I was able to see we would have won Sin said with a slight chuckle, as memories started to fill his head. Naruto now added Danzo to his kill list and was shocked that Sin was Shisui's partner, don't worry big brother, I will kill both Danzo and Sin for causing our family, Pain Naruto promised as he stared into Shisui's black orbs. Shisui gave one last smile as he died. Again. Naruto turned to the battle between Saratobi and Orochimaru and pulled out a scroll and summoned a shuriken. The shuriken in Naruto's hand started to crackle with lightning chakra coating it, and then wind particles started to move at high speed pace around the shuriken, both the lightning and wind chakra were struggling to overpower each other, since Naruto put more chakra into the lightning, because he knew of its weakness to wind. I only have one shot at this with that last thought he flung the double element shuriken at the moving snake. Orochimaru screamed in pain as Saratobi sealed away his arms, he then saw a glint that was coming near him, Orochimaru and Saratobi jumped out of the way to avoid the deadly object. Bacha Naruto smirked in victory as he pulled his finger that was connected to ninja wire, the shuriken started to go backwards at an even higher speed as it crushed the ground beneath it. 
Orochimaru's grew a smirk as one of his Odo guards appeared behind Suratobi, with their curse mark activated and kicked him towards Orochimaru, another one of his guards came up behind him and grabbed him, allowing them both to disappear out of sight all in one motion. Naruto's eyes widened as the shuriken that was meant to kill Orochimaru ripped Suratobi's side open, and the old man lost the life in his eyes. Suratobi sensei Naruto heard someone shout. Naruto felt a chakra source appear above him and looked up, but it was too late to escape, as he felt a hand pop out through his chest, at that moment everything went black when something crashed on top of his head. Naruto opened his eyes and only saw blurs as he tried to regain his sense of sight. He tried to rub his eyes, but felt himself unable to move, he slowly brought up his head, but saw himself shackled to the wall. Naruto couldn't feel his chakra which meant he wouldn't be able to talk to Asura. So you're finally awake his head snapped towards the place he heard the noise and saw that weird ankle lady standing next to Ibiki. His senses became fully aware as looked down at his body and saw only pants on. We have some questions that we need to ask. Ibiki said as he walked towards Naruto, no one was able to go inside your mind. It seems like you have really good mind protection. Naruto gave them no response Anko chose this moment to talk, look kid give us the information we need peacefully, or we will have to take it the other way she said, secretly hoping the kid would take the peaceful way. Naruto said nothing, Anko and Ibiki walked out to prepare the other way. He heard their conversation, I can't believe the Hokage would order us to torture a child. Anko, you and I both know that Naruto is not a mere child, he holds secrets of the Akatsuki that we need to know, plus he killed Sandami sama the Akatsuki are going after the Biju, which means that the Hokage's children are a target, Minato-sama is doing this so he can protect his children. Even if I will stab Akatsuki later in the future, I am still a member and I pledge to them. I am not going to bend over and give these nonsense all the information they need Naruto said as he waited for the other two ninjas to come back. That nonsense Sin needs to hurry up and come save me Naruto said with hope, who am I kidding, Sin is a Chiha killing nonsense he won't save me. One day later. The Genin were having a meeting with the Hokage to see who would become Chunin when Anko and Ibiki walked in with annoyed looks on their faces. Okage-sama, we are trying everything with the damn brat, but he won't give up, you can go have a look down there yourself he is a bloody mess. The brat won't even talk Anko exclaimed. The Genin knew Anko and Ibiki's position in the village, so they knew that they were torturing someone. Before Minato could speak, alarms started to blare inside the village, and the Anbu captain raced inside the room, Hokage-sama Naruto has escaped Minato instantly stood up and called an Anbu, who immediately left to go find Naruto. Naruto watched as Ibiki and Anko left, leaving Achunin in training to guard him. Naruto was beaten and a bloody mess. Junin pulled out a book and started reading it while giggling. Naruto felt the shackles that held him fall off, before he hit the ground and appeared behind him and sucked him through. Naruto felt water splash all over his body as it cleaned the blood off him, and he felt the seal that bonded his chakra disappear. Damn it feels good to have my chakra back Naruto thought as he felt his wounds start to immediately heal. Damn it feels good to be back he heard Asura mimic him. What took you Naruto groaned out as he struggled to get up. I had to pay my respects to the Saratobi, and I had unfinished business with the Achiha clan he said with his annoying emotionless voice. Naruto quickly turned to look at Sin, what do you mean by the last party demanded? Don't worry, only a few died. Plus I had to give someone their birthday gift Sin said. Naruto was surprised that Sin gave him that last bit of information, but quickly casted it away, thinking that it was Sin's sick way of saying he just got done killing someone. Who did you kill Naruto questioned him while taking the cloak Sin handed him. Some people that have been alive far too long Sin said, not saying anything else. They will probably blame it on me Naruto groaned. It doesn't matter who they think it is, those people are dead and will remain, dead. Sin said as he grabbed Naruto and flung him over his shoulder, seeing that the boy still didn't get the feeling back in his legs. Naruto didn't protest, it was better than actually having to ask Sin to carry him. Leader Sama has a new mission for us. Sin said as he and Naruto disappeared through a vortex. One month later. Saren was crying, while Sasuke hugged her and let her release all her locked up emotions. Tonight is her birthday, but she also received some news from the Hokage and a book. The said book was laying on the floor near the two teens and opened on a particular page of a boy with gravity-defying hair wearing the Akatsuki cloak. Basic information. Name Naruto Ichiha. Age. 13. Team friends. Unknown. Former village. Born in Kanahagakur but disappeared on the day of the Kaiubi attack. Village rank. None. Biography. Naruto was born into one of the most powerful clans, the Ichiha clan. Known sibling is Saren Ichiha. Bloodline. Sharingan. Statues. Criminal known to have killed the third Hokage and killed two Ichiha clan elders. He is also a part of the S rank criminal group Akatsuki. Criminal rank. S. Organization. Akatsuki. 
wanted in dead or alive by Kanahagakur, Sunagakur, Kumagakur, and Awagakur. One year later. Over the past year, Naruto has been training. Naruto asked Asura why he wouldn't teach him anything powerful, Asura always responds with, you need to understand something before I teach you fully. Naruto never asked him what he needed to understand. Asura did give Naruto the Black Hawk summoning contract. The Black Hawks could not talk, but they understood what Naruto needed when he summoned them, they even taught him how to use their sage mode through tablets which he had to read. His sage mode allowed him to grow large black raven-like wings, increased eye vision, extra speed and strength. He could also sense nature chakra. Naruto awoke in a room that pain gave him inside the cage tower in Amagakur. He stretched his still sore body enjoying the pop of his bones. Something felt weird as he stared at his arms and hands, why do I feel so small he mused. He quickly ran to the body-sized mirror in his room and frowned, staring right back at him, was the reflection of his eight-year-old body. He activated his Sharingan and looked around, I can rule out he then ran to the small window in the room and frowned, I can also rule out time travel. He looked down at his attire and realized that his boxers were way too small for his eight-year-old body. Naruto sighed in annoyance and went to the bathroom to do his morning rituals. When he was done he put on his Akatsuki cloak. There is a strange chakra in the air he heard Asura muse. Naruto frowned, how was he not able to sense the chakra? Before he could ask Asura what the deal was he heard a knock on his door, he opened it, and a girl came in holding a black anbu style pants and some boxers. The girl was a little shorter than Naruto. She had orange hair that reached her waist and facial features that were a mixture of Nagato and Conan. She wore black anbu style pants and a black t-shirt. This girl is known as Yahika, Nagato and Conan's daughter. Conan and Nagato's love only reaches as far as brother and sister, but they decided that they should make a child to hold their legacy, just in case they died without their plan succeeding. She had a small blush on her face that didn't go right with her serious features, as she stared at the eight-year-old Naruto, Father Sama says that he can see a strange chakra in the air, and some of the villagers around age 16 and lower have been transformed into their eight-year-old selves. You were 10 before this happened right Naruto asked, receiving a small nod from the girl, well it's good to see I'm not the only person affected. Well Father Sama says that the chakra in the air seems to be getting bigger and stronger, but not at a fast pace. Him and the rest of the members are talking about it right now, they told me to come get you she finished handing Naruto his clothes and leaving. After Naruto finished putting on his clothes he took his sword which he named Arashi, he strapped it around his back. He took one last look at himself in the mirror, his hair was completely black, spikes were going all over the place. He looked different than his older self, if he didn't activate his Sharingan people, probably wouldn't make the connection. As he walked towards the room where the meetings usually took place he sighed knowing that whatever this is would be a pain. All the members looked up when he arrived kiss him, and Dadara flashed him a grin. Naruto take a seat pain instructed his king-like throne, I can see the chakra in the air, but Sin cannot. The chakra seems to be getting larger but not fast. I think that the person that casted needs to gain more chakra to transform older people into children. If we all start turning into children then it could mess up some of our and the ceiling of the, the only people here I believe it won't affect our Sasori, since his body is basically a puppet's, hide in Kakuzu, since they are immortal pain explained with a pensive expression. Naruto, I would like you and Yahiko to explore the situation. We already crossed Orochimaru out because Sasori gave him a little visit. For all we know this person probably isn't even in the elemental nations. I chose you for this mission because the rest of us have other important matters to attend before we turn into children. If you find any information at all don't hesitate to contact us. Pain stated as he reached inside his robe and flung Naruto a headband that has a swirl on it, that might come in handy. Pain answered the unasked question. When do I leave? Naruto questioned, on the inside he was bubbling with excitement at receiving such an amazing mission. In the next five minutes, Yahika has already been informed and is waiting for you at the front gates. Pain answered. Naruto gave a small nod, before he could leave, someone spoke up. Naruto senpai wait he turned to stare at Tobi most think that he is just back up in case any of the members got hurt or died, but Naruto knew him as Abito Ichiha the mastermind behind Akatsuki, be careful on this mission, and make sure you do not fail leader Sama. Also have a fun time he yelled like an idiot. Naruto ignored him, he went back to his room and sealed a couple of things that he would need, mostly money. He took off his ring and placed it inside one of the scrolls. He then left to meet Yahika at the front gate. They both had no leads on the cause of all this, but they wanted to prove that they are capable and smart enough to figure this out. They both gave a nod and ran off hoping to find something that would interest and help them. Which is why we need all of you to find the cause of this and put an end to it. The fourth Hokage finished as he looked at Kanoha 15 and their senseis, with the addition of Sai, a strange pale boy. His children decided against going on a training trip outside the village, they chose to stay inside the village and train in the hands of many different senseis. 
Sasuke left the village for S rank mission that lasted a year, he infiltrated Orochimaru's many bases as his apprentice, then when he felt that he learned enough, he stole some of Orochimaru's scrolls, even his summoning contract. Kanoha and its allies Kumo and Iwa worked together to destroy some of Orochimaru. Sasuke now wears his shipyard and clothing. Saren immersed herself into training inside the Ichiha compound, her friends barely got to see her. Sasuke, Shikamaru, and Menma gained the rank of Chunin. All of the Kanoha 15 were back inside their 8 year old bodies. The council thought that the kids might be the key to solving the mystery, since they were transformed. The commander of this mission is Kakashi Haddock, second in command is Itachi Ichiha. Remember to meet up with the reinforcements that Kumo and Iwa are sending. You guys are ordered to leave within the hour, pack for a long trip Minato finished. The Kashi looked at his squad with a sweat drop, this is such a big team. Listen up he yelled, catching the attention of the group of 8 year olds, this is going to be a long mission, if we don't find any leads within a 2 month time limit we are returning. Group up with your sensei and follow my lead, look out for anything strange. But that final note they all jumped away from the village leaving their families behind. They soon meet up with Z, Amoy, Kari and Kuritsuchi, who burst out laughing at the amount of people Kano has sent for this mission. When the laughter died down, they bowed to Kakashi who is the commander of the mission. They traveled a little bit until they reached a forest. Menma set up a sound barrier. Alright Kakashi began with a clasp of his hands, I'm assuming that you all read the mission states before we left. We can already cross out Orochimaru as the cause, because of Jureya's run in with him. Kakashi turned to Shikamaru and gave him a nod. Shikamaru stood and took a breath, since we can remove Orochimaru from the equation we now suspect Akatsuki. Emotions started flying through everyone's face as an image of Naruto with his Sharingan flashed through their minds, but in Kuritsuchi's case, an image of Dadara flashed through her mind. We don't know what Akatsuki is going to gain from turning people into children, but it must be something big if they would go through the trouble of doing it. The only way we can be sure that Akatsuki is behind this is to meet one of their members, until then they are our top suspect Shikamaru finished. Everyone let the information sink in, some of them felt fear creep up at the thought of meeting a Akatsuki member, while others felt excitement at the thought of getting to fight a Akatsuki member. Well I hope the Akatsuki is the cause Z began while cracking his knuckles. His 8 year old body was way smaller than his 13 year old one, but you could still feel the power roll off of him, I have a score to settle with one of their members. Everyone knew who he was talking about. We will try to avoid combat with any Akatsuki member for as long as we can Kakashi said as he pulled out a scroll and rolled it out. We are in luck, two of the members here can see the chakra that created the and the other could sense, it he said with an eye smile. Sasuke and Menma took this moment to stand up. Sasuke could see the chakra because of Indra's powerful Sharingan, and Menma could sense it because of the Kaiubi's powerful sensor skills, but the rest of their group members didn't need to know that. Sasuke was about to speak, but Menma beat him, the chakra is stronger in some places than the rest, that is where I come into play, since Sasuke can only see the chakra that is in his eyesight. I will mark the places on the map that the chakra source is stronger, and then we will all investigate those places Menma informed with a big smile on his face, for being able to be more useful than Sasuke. Menma walked over to the scroll that Kakashi rolled out which is a map of the entire elemental nation, and started listening to Kurama, who told him where to mark. He marked four different locations inside of the, the land of iron and the land of snow. In total we have eight different locations that we need to investigate, we will start with the land of iron. If we run into potential trouble let me do the talking, if that does not work, I will give the signal for us to engage in combat. When we reach the Iron Nation I will split you guys into different groups Kakashi informed. Itachi used one of his ravens to send word to the Hokage that they need him to tell the Land of Iron of their arrival. Before they would start their travel to the Land of Iron, they set up their tents to rest and create more planes. One of the positives of having such a big squad was that everyone's watching time was short. Sasuke sat inside of his tent with Saren head on his lap as he stroked her hair, they have been dating for a while now. Menma laid down on the opposite side of them, he was thinking about the mission. Hirama says that he can't feel Asura's chakra anymore Menma stated as he looked at the ceiling of the tent with a frown. Saren was someone that they both trusted with the information about Asura, Indra and Kurama. Indra says the same thing Sasuke said with a small frown forming. Saren stayed quiet, where are you brother? She thought as an image of Naruto flashed through her mind. Naruto sat down on a tree stump, black lines that surrounded his eyes started to fade away. I thought for sure I would be able to sense the chakra with sage mode Naruto thought, maybe it's a different type of chakra, since it seems to be undetectable. Naruto could almost feel a sura smirk inside of his head, don't worry, I'll tell you where to go since I can sense the chakra. Naruto walked inside the tent that they set up, Yahaka was meditating. Yahaka, I was able to pinpoint 8 locations that the chakra is stronger at Naruto informed. 
Gahika didn't bother to ask him how he was able to feel the chakra, she stood and looked at Naruto. Well let's get a move on then she said as the tent began to peel itself into sheets of paper and enter Yahika. Before they began their move Naruto spoke, we will be going to the land of iron, when we arrive there I need to go somewhere first to get a weapon created Yahika nodded, you can get one mate also I'll pay. Yahika gained a small smile and a small blush. They started to jump through the trees at high speeds, Yahika, it will be best if we do not use our names if we come in contact with enemy ninja. If it happens let me speak I will come up with a name on the spot, I don't know if people would recognize me from my bingo book entry, but if they don't we will use that to our advantage. Naruto could feel Yahika's worries even though she tried to hide it, if you are worried about failing your first mission or not coming back home, since this is your first time outside the village then don't worry, I will protect you. Thank you Naruto she responded with a smile. It took them days, but they finally reached the land of iron. Naruto and Yahika stared across the borders that they were nearing. Yahika was wearing a long chakra cloak, which was meant to regenerate heat inside of the cloak. Naruto stayed in his normal attire, choosing to use his own chakra as a source of warmth. There wasn't much snow, it was summer in the land of iron, but there were still chilly winds that came by. The blacksmith village that you are looking for should be around here, I'll tell you where to go Asura said. Naruto led Yahika into a village where many samurai were guarding. What are ninjas doing in the land of iron one of the guards asked. When Naruto saw all of them reach for their weapons he held his hands out, we are only here to pay a blacksmith to carve us something. Let them in a new voice came. A man in white samurai armor came out from the gates. He had a long white beard and a serious expression on his face. Captain Shin all the gate guards stood up straight and gave a salute. We don't push out any visitors, especially paying ones. If they start any problems don't hesitate to kill them Shin ordered, clearly underestimating the ninjas. Shin turned his attention to Naruto, what age are you boy? 13 and yes this is unknown work Naruto said. Shin gave them a small nod and allowed them to enter the village, Naruto stared around at the diversity of people. The land of iron, a neutral land he commented. The person who used this probably thought that no one would suspect him or her to be hiding here. Naruto walked around until he came up to a big building that has the title Shin's blacksmith. Naruto raised a brow, seems like this village has a lot of Shins. They entered the building with Yahika trailing behind him the bells above them jingled. I'll be right there they heard someone yell in the back of the shop. A tall toned man came out, he wore samurai armor and looked just like Captain Shin. Are you related to Captain Shin Yahika asked from beside Naruto. The man stared at them for a moment trying to figure out if they are a threat or not, yep Captain Shin is my old man, we come from a long line of Shins he said with his gruff voice, while rubbing the back of his head. So what do you guys need he asked after a long silence fell on them. Naruto pulled out a piece of paper and started to draw a picture of a fan-like object, the gun by. Shin looked at the object on the paper with a raised brow, you Uichiha. No. I'm just making the weapon since I have a high affinity to wind. It will be useful Naruto partially lied. Shin nodded his head in understanding, even though he could tell the kid was lying. What type of weapon would you like Naruto asked Yahika to make sure that he didn't reveal her name. Yahika took on a pensive expression, then shook her head, I don't need one because of my speciality she said. Naruto nodded his head in understanding. Shin did the calculations and told them that the weapon would be ready in around 10 days. Naruto nodded his head in understanding, then paid Shin half the total price. Naruto and Yahika left the village to go find the first place which was not too far away from the other village. They stood on top of a small hill and examined the village, it is extremely small. What shocked both of them was that smoke was coming from the village. Naruto felt two large chakra sources about 20 minutes off from the village heading towards them. He frowned, he may not be as good of a sensor as Asura, but he was pretty good himself. Asura, I'm going to have to cut your chakra flow completely, it seems the Kano has sent some ninjas to investigate things this mission has gotten harder. Do what you must, but make sure that you do not hesitate to call me if you need help Asura said as Naruto started to cancel out his chakra flow. Asura sat in the darkness of Naruto's mind meditating while wondering when Naruto was going to realize what he needed to understand. Yahika, it seems that this village has been attacked, and the Land of Iron officials didn't realize it yet, this village must not have many samurai because of its eyes. Let's go Naruto said as he jumped off the cliff and started running through the village. Yahika's body started to peel off in the form of sheets of paper heading towards the village. We must hurry, I can feel Kanoha Ninja's chakra headed this way Naruto said as he ran through the village splitting up with Yahika. Naruto ignored all the burnt bodies that laid on the floors of the village. Now that he was inside of the village he could actually feel the strange chakra, it felt weird to say the least. There must be a barrier around here he muttered. He went to where he could feel the chakra the most, inside the heart of the village, stood a big statue of a woman holding a clock. The statue looked like it was made of silver metal. 
The woman's beauty was evident on the statue. Naruto could see that the statue of the woman had long straight hair with bangs on the side of her face. Strong waves of chakra were entering the statue in waves, Naruto activated his Sharingan and found that the chakra was being stored inside of the clock the woman was holding. Naruto expanded his senses, the Konoha ninja were getting close now, and there was no one else in the village beside him and Yahika. Naruto climbed the statue and ripped off the clock it was holding which was so easy it surprised him. Yahika appeared next to Naruto moments later holding some scrolls, Naruto gave her a small nod, and they both left the village to go back to the cliff they were on earlier. I have to destroy the statue, I don't want anyone else getting any leads Naruto stated as he sat down in a meditative position. Yahika immediately recognized what Naruto was going to do after he went through a set of hand seals, and the sky started getting darker above the small village. Akashi, Mina, Mido, Sakura, Asuma, Ino, Shikamaru, and Choji ran towards the village that they were assigned to investigate, before they reached the smoking village they stopped when they saw black clouds made of chakra start to surround the village. Wait Kakashi raised his hand, stopping them from their movements, I remember this chakra signature he told them in a grim tone. Lighting release heaven's breath there was a loud clap of thunder heard until the sky started to spark up in pure black lightning chakra. Everything stopped for an enormous amount until an enormous amount of lightning strikes came crashing down on the poor village, the majority of the lightning seemed to aim at the center of the village. When the show of lights and destruction ended Mido spoke for everyone, what the hell was that? It must have been Akatsuki destroying any evidence of their hands in this Kakashi concluded. Everyone looked at the commander of the mission with wide eyes. They looked towards the cliff where they heard the S-rank caster shout, damn whoever it is must be good at hiding their chakra if I wasn't able to sense them until they used that dot. The Kashi sighed as he bit his thumb, went through some hand seals and slammed his hands on the ground, summoning Jutsu there was a little puff, until three small dogs appeared each with a Konoha headband around their necks. The Okakashi, Asuma and Bratz, what's up one of them greeted while the others barked. No time for small talk. I need you guys to go round up the other members of the mission and tell them to meet here Kakashi said, handing the smallest of the dogs a scroll. Will do boss the other dogs barked in agreement and they raced off. How do you know it was Akatsuki Ino questioned. Well when you guys become experienced sensor ninjas like me you will start to remember different chakra signatures automatically. Some ninjas are able to suppress their chakra all the way to the point that they would not be able to be sensed or recognize Kakashi informed them. They went and examined the completely destroyed village to try and find out anything that would be useful. The only interesting thing that they found was a hole in the center of the village. They then decided that it was best to go meet up with the others. Naruto was sweating and breathing heavily, his small body not used to being put under so much strain. We need to take a break, my chakra control seems to have slipped because of this Naruto said as he pointed towards his small body. They were both walking through the village that was under Shin's command, they saw samurai running out of the village in a hurry. They must have been found Yahika said, talking about the destroyed village. Naruto just nodded, and they both arrived at a hotel in the village they rented out one room. Naruto sat on the floor near the bed and took a meditative pose and sighed, he wasted nearly half his chakra with that dot. What's wrong with Naruto Yahika asked with worry as she changed into her nightgown. That took too much chakra without a sura Naruto noted the next part to himself. Yahika sat down next to Naruto and leaned her head on his shoulder, next time use your sage mode and I'll stall the Konoha ninjas. Naruto thought about it for a moment and agreed. Sage mode took a while to get into, but it was worth it, and with Yahika stalling the Konoha ninja, he would have the time and energy to use them without much fatigue. As Yahika fell asleep with her head in his lap, Naruto stayed awake keeping guard. He wanted to sleep also, but with Kakashi knowing that he was in the land of iron, he didn't want to risk it, no point in hiding Azra Naruto concluded. Moments later he felt Asura start to flow through him, Asura took a moment to go through Naruto's memories. You won't need to go sage mode to use it, now that I'm here Asura assured him. Good, I'll tell Yahika that I found out that my gravity seals were messing up with my chakra control when she wakes up Naruto told him gladly that he had his partner back. Remember that you don't need to be in sage mode to use the wings Asura reminded Naruto. Naruto agreed with Asura as he moved Yahika to the bed and laid down next to her while staring at the ceiling. I wonder who the cause of this is Naruto paused for dramatic effects, but that statue reminds me of someone I haven't seen in a long time. It's been around 10 days since Naruto took the clock from the familiar looking statue. The other villages were getting inspected by the samurai. He already got his gun by maid and was proceeding on testing it out. Asura was busy talking with Shukaku, probably still reprimanding him, Naruto guessed. Naruto still remembered the last time Asura decided to give him some discipline. Flashback. Naruto read his entry in the bingo book, S rank was the only thing that went through his mind. Asura scoffed, do you really believe you're S rank? He questioned Naruto. 
Naruto mused on the thought of S rank for a while, well yeah I killed the Sandame Hokage, and I'm part of the Akatsuki he concluded. Naruto suddenly felt pain curse through his veins, and fell face forward on the ground unable to move. I'm going to keep you like that until you learn the real meaning of S rank Asura paused when he heard Naruto groan in pain, you were not the one to kill the Sandame Hokage it was one of Orochimaru's goons, plus the Sandman was already tired from his fight with Orochimaru. Just because you are part of the Akatsuki doesn't make you S rank. It's only a matter of time until Konoha reviews the fight and changes your ranking in the bingo book. When Asura finished his explanation Naruto passed out from the pain. End of flashback. He still never got back at Asura for putting him through all that pain, but in the end, Asura was right Konoha did change his rank in the bingo book. Their anger at him for killing their beloved Sandam Hokage clouded their judgment over his rank. They still blamed him for the death of Hiruzen Suratobi which Naruto was fine with. Ihiko, use as much chakra as you can in the fireball. I want to test this weapon to its full capacity Naruto instructed as he positioned himself holding his gun by out. Ihiko started gathering chakra to her lungs and went through a string of hand seals, fire release great fireball. Naruto watched as the flames drew closer. He was about to try and reflect on this when he heard Asura, Naruto you fool get out of the way. Naruto chose to listen to his warnings and quickly evaded the searing heat, he ignored Yahiko's raised brow. What do you want? You just came back and you're already yelling at me Naruto questioned, obviously pissed. Well if you had taken the time to actually listen to Madara, you would have learned that the Gunbai needs a special Ichiha gem from the ancient times to be able to work. I only leave for a day and here you are being an idiot, did you actually believe that anyone would be able to just make a weapon that looks like Madara's Gunbai and use it? Asura wanted to smack himself for leaving Naruto alone for so long. Naruto thought about it for a while, damn I guess that was pretty foolish of me Naruto responded not bothering to thank Asura for saving his life. Naruto and Yahiko went to enjoy one of the village's hot springs. They both wore their undergarments as Yahiko took the time to relax Naruto, and Asura found out the next locations of the chakra signals. The land of snow, memories came rushing at Naruto after he heard the location. Flashback. The young Naruto walked around a very snowy place, he wore a black cloak to warm himself. Abito was busy doing some business so he was by himself. He walked around until he found himself near a frozen lake, a little girl sat down crying. As Naruto neared the girl he got a good look at her appearance, the girl sat crying with her light blue eyes open her short black hair tied in two short ponytails. She wore a very beautiful dress. Naruto could tell that she is older than him by at least five or six years. Naruto dropped down on the ground next to her, startling her in the process. Who are you she quickly stuttered out. Name Zichiha Naruto replayed Naruto in an uncaring tone. The girl gave a small pout, I'm Kazuhana Koyuki she introduced herself in a proud tone. Is he going to bully me too or treat me like I'm some fragile doll she wondered. How come you were crying Naruto asked as he pushed himself onto the ground staring into the clear sky. The girl suddenly frowned, then mumbled something only to repeat herself after Naruto asked, I tried to play with the other kids, but they were mean to me. Naruto slowly turned to face her, I don't have many friends myself. Do you want to play with me? Koyuki immediately nodded her head. They both ran around throwing snowballs at each other until they got bored and laid on the snowy floor to stare at the sky. I like your necklace Naruto complimented as he remembered seeing her necklace flapping around while they played. He really enjoyed feeling like a kid, running around carefree and laughing. Koyuki gained a big smile as she thought about the person that gave her the necklace, my mom gave it to me before she dot died dot her smile suddenly fell as she remembered her dead mother. She said that it can preserve the youth in the world. I don't know what she meant by that but dot my goal is to one day find out new confidence started to find its way into the girl's heart. She told Naruto about her dad and how she is a princess. She was glad that Naruto's opinion of her didn't change even after finding out her title. Naruto realized that Abito would be coming back soon, so he stood up causing Koyuki to do the same, it's been fun getting to know you Koyuki, but I have to go or I'll be in big trouble. One day I'll come back and help you find out what your mother meant. Koyuki had tears flowing down her face as she instantly hugged Naruto and planted a kiss on his cheeks. Don't worry, this isn't a Naruto Koyuki story. As Naruto walked back to the place that Abito left him at he placed a hand on his cheeks, feeling the place where Koyuki kissed him. He then did one thing that surprised him, he blushed. End of flashback. Naruto's eyes widened as he suddenly understood, Koyuki or someone else must be using the necklace. He then felt ashamed for forgetting to visit Koyuki. I feel like an idiot. Ihiko Naruto said, catching the attention of the almost asleep girl, put on your clothes and pack your scrolls. I think I found out the cause of all this. Ihiko gave Naruto a questioning glance, but nodded. They both went back to where they slept and packed up their scrolls placing them inside their clothes. Naruto informed them that they are going to travel to the land of snow. 
Boyuki Naruto thought with a frown. He was the girl's first friend and completely forgot about her. Some time later. Naruto and Yahiko finally reached the border of the Land of Snow. When they entered it they felt their bodies go under immense pain, they landed face first on the ground. Naruto groaned as he felt the pain suddenly vanished, he looked to his side and saw an older looking Yahiko out cold. Not used to the pain Asura commented. Naruto got up feeling taller than before, he looked down at himself, you have been reverted back to your older self. Asura informed me. Naruto unsealed a scroll that contained his and Yahiko's clothing in them. Naruto was surprised that there was no border patrol around, something wasn't right. He unclothed himself from the tight pants that he was wearing earlier. He put on his spare clothing, the normal Akatsuki attire. He then looked at Yahiko and gained a blush. He removed all her clothing and couldn't help but stare at her still developing body. What a gentleman Asura said sarcastically. Naruto ignored him while dressing Yahiko up in the normal Akatsuki attire. He heard her groan as he placed her on the ground, she is gonna wake up soon Naruto concluded as he raced off towards the lead village of the land of snow. As Naruto neared the village he walked through a snow-covered forest. The lead village of the land of snow has many frozen lakes, bordering it is the ocean which is not frozen. Naruto was shocked for a moment that no samurai came attacking him. He activated his Sharingan and looked off in the distance near the ocean. He saw a huge source of chakra coming from a lone aircraft made of metal that floated in the air above the ocean out of place. Am was the only thing that left Naruto's mouth. He was impressed by the size of the aircraft. Naruto shifted Yahiko on his back into a more comfortable position. He jumped above the gates of the village and started running trying to reach the aircraft. He sensed a lot of low-level chakra signatures underground. Civilians, they must be hiding from something Asura informed. As Naruto started too near the exit of the village that led to the ocean, he saw bodies littering the floor and broken buildings. Damn I missed one hell of a battle he frowned. As he got a better view of the surface of the ocean, he saw a gigantic ball rolling towards an ice dragon. I release great fireball an enormous fireball intercepted the ice dragon. Naruto watched as someone landed next to the gigantic ball that suddenly got smaller and turned into a fat boy. As he looked at the two ninjas the person that he immediately recognized was Itachi Ichiha. Some other jounin of Konoha landed near them, they all looked serious. Suddenly the water underneath their feet turned into ice, the Konoha ninja jumped away as spikes sprouted out from the ice. About 10 other ninjas landed on the ice, they all wore the same type of clothing, a white jumpsuit with silver metal lining up various places on the jumpsuit. Naruto watched as Kakashi Haddock jumped out of the aircraft holding a young woman on his back, when Naruto saw her face and hair he immediately knew that it was Koyuki. Just as he was about to race towards Kakashi he heard Asura's voice, don't bother, they are the ones that rescued her. I can sense the chakra of the necklace that did this. It's somewhere in the aircraft. Find the necklace and destroy it. Naruto estimated the length between the ocean and the aircraft then nodded to himself Koyuki is safe. I'll speak to her after I retrieve the necklace. It's a shame that the Konoha ninja beat me here. He took a deep breath and firmly got a grip on Yahiko's legs. He started off in a sprint towards the water which changed into a full-out fun, once he hit the water in what seemed like a flash he startled the other ninja. He ignored their reactions, then sent Chakra to his legs jumping into the air towards the aircraft. I was about to follow Naruto's movements until he was forced to dodge an incoming ice dragon. As Naruto grabbed a hold of the ship with one hand while keeping his other one underneath Yahiko he sighed, now how the hell am I supposed to climb this? He was surprised to hear Yahiko groan as she slowly awoke. She stared at her surroundings, then listened to Naruto explain what happened while blushing at the thought of Naruto changing her. She let go of Naruto as a pair of paper wings appeared from her back, Naruto felt like smacking himself, but refrained from doing so. Asura why didn't you remind me that I could use my wings? Asura took a long sigh, Naruto I can't keep reminding you about your abilities, it's your job as a ninja to remember what you are capable of doing. Before Naruto could use his wings he felt Yahiko pace her hands under his arms and lift him up towards a door on the side of the aircraft. She used her chakra to lock the door. As they both entered the aircraft they looked around, they seemed to be inside of a hallway. Alright let's go find that necklace Naruto ordered. Naruto felt different chakra signatures. Mina, Mido, Sakura, Menma, Sasuke and Dot Saren Naruto felt excitement as he raced towards the flaring chakra signatures. When he reached what seemed to be the end of the hall he stopped, there was a drop into a gigantic room. Naruto saw Team Kakashi and Itachi try to fight this man wearing a black armor. You brats will be the first to help me test out my prototype chakra armor the man stated with an evil grin. You are a sick man Dodo, using your own niece Koyuki for your sick deeds a voice shouted. Naruto watched as a blue blur smacked the shit out of Dodo, cracking his chakra armor in the process. As Dodo flew in the air Naruto saw the necklace appear around his neck and chose to react, he immediately jumped down and grabbed the necklace from around Dog's neck. 
As Dodo tried to get up after the smacking he revived Naruto placed his foot on his neck while tying the necklace around his own neck. When Naruto finished placing the necklace on he crushed Dog's neck with a sickening crunch. Naruto heard a gasp of shock from the other occupants of the room at the display of brutality. Naruto looked around the room as Yuhiko landed next to him taking in his surroundings. Then his gaze finally landed on Saren, beautiful. Was the only thought that flashed through his mind as he stared at his sister. Menma entered in a battle stance in front of his sisters, while Sasuke stood in front of Sakura and Saren. Saren's eyes suddenly started to fill with worry, what are you guys doing? That's my broth. Menma interrupted her before she could finish, we are doing our duty as ninjas of Konoha and completing our mission while bringing down a criminal. Saren's eyes widened as she understood Menma's words before she could speak. Menma interrupted her again, don't worry Saren, we will try to bring him alive. Z walked over to stand next to Menma and Sasuke. Let me get the first crack at him he suggested with a wide eager smirk. I'm sorry Z, but we will be getting rid of him and his partner as a team Sasuke simply stated as he activated his Sharingan. Mina avoided looking at Naruto, a blush forming on her face, he is so cute. Before anyone made a movement Sasuke turned towards Saren and whispered something in her ears, I know you don't want to hurt your brother, but what if the only way to talk to him is to beat him in battle. Plus this is a mission not a family reunion. Be sure to remember that you are always a ninja of Konoha first. Sasuke turned around to stare at Naruto with his activated Sharingan eyes, while Naruto did the same. Naruto felt a small tug on his head, warning him that he was trying to overpower him, he immediately expelled his chakra, overpowering the dot as he left, he only could see Saren standing in front of him. Naruto behind you. Asura yelled. Naruto immediately ducked while avoiding the sword that was supposed to remove his head from his neck, he gave a slight chuckle, so much for bringing me alive. But that last thought Naruto sent a backwards kick towards the stomach of the person that was behind me. He heard a groan as he was sent slamming into the metal walls of the gigantic room. The attacks didn't stop there however, as Naruto jumped up to avoid the legs as Mido sneaked up on him. He landed back on the floor a few meters from Mido. Naruto looked around and watched as the bottom half of Yuhiko was paper as she floated in the air with her wings, she was throwing paper shurikens at Mina, Menma and Sasuke, keeping them at bay on the ground. Asura. Naruto heard the man grunt in, let me handle this battle, I wanna see how I would fare against all of them. Asura said nothing, but Naruto already knew that he would stay out. Naruto brought out his ninjato in front of him, as soon as Sakura brought down her kunai on him, using her super strength to try and break his sword. Naruto stared at the pink-haired girl for a moment before he disappeared in a flock of birds. Sakura recognized it as her chakra. As soon as she faded she gasped in shock as she felt the cold blade of Naruto's ninjato against her throat. Naruto stood behind her with one arm hanging limply by his side, while the other held his ninjato over his head against Sakura's throat. All battles around them stopped as they stared at Naruto and Sakura. Saren's eyes widened before rage filled her. Flashback. Saren laid on her bed in a small apartment near the Ichiha compound, with a small smile on her face, as she remembered Sasuke telling their friends about their relationship. She stood up to answer a small knock on her door, and frowned when she saw who stood on the other side. Sakura stood in front of Saren while playing with her fingers. What do you want Sakura Saren asked after a big moment of silence. She honestly thought that Sakura was there to scream at her for dating Sasuke. Elle looked Saren she paused for a moment, finding the courage to continue. I've always liked Sasuke since the moment I laid eyes on him. I know I should be really mad at you for taking him from me, but I'm not dot at this point Sakura was looking at Saren with a nervous expression, she barely has friends, since not a lot of people were able to take her constant talking. Saren was actually shocked by Saren's declaration, but gave a small smile, why aren't you mad? Even though Tsunade Sensei is easily angered, she gives some of the best romance advice. She told me that since Sasuke shows no interest in me, I should stop frowning over him and chase after someone who does spare a second glance at me. Sakura's voice was filled with determination at the end of her speech. Saren nodded her head in understanding as she offered her hand to Sakura, to new friends she was surprised though when Sakura immediately hugged her and started to speak so fast Saren could barely even understand her. End of flashback. Naruto had to retract his sword and jump away to dodge a lone shuriken. Don't you dare hurt my friends he heard a voice shout as he brought up his hands to block a punch to the face. Sakura watched in amazement as Saren entered a fierce tojutsu battle with Naruto. Naruto ducked to avoid a punch to the head as he bent low and swiped Saren's legs from beneath her. Show me your power little sister he thought as Saren rolled over and jumped quickly to her feet. Naruto's instincts kicked in as he turned around toward Sakura quickly and brought up his hands to block her punch. To Naruto's shock and everyone else there Naruto's entire arm seemed to explode in a shower of gore and blood. Naruto jumped back and landed on the wall while using his chakra to stick to it. 
His vision started to get hazy as he looked down at his arm, pain was the only thought that seemed to float around his head. He could feel the tears threatening to fall, but he would not give Sakura the satisfaction of seeing him cry. He silently whispered. Saren was shocked for a moment at Sakura's strength, but then frowned as she saw Yahiko land next to Naruto, the only way to talk to him is to beat him in battle. Her Sharingan took place over her normal one as she watched Yahiko look at Naruto's arms. Sasuke seemingly read Saren's mind and shouted, no. Saren, we can beat them without you using that jutsu. Saren paid no heed to Sasuke as she stared at Yuhiko's back, she then summoned a large portion of her chakra as she muttered, Kotomatsukami distinguished heavenly gods. Yuhiko suddenly pulled out a kunai made of paper as she attempted to stab Naruto, Naruto jumped out of the way, landing far away from everyone else in the room. He grunted as he felt his arm shift painfully, he pulled out his ninjato ready to kill anyone that tried to come near him. Yuhiko landed near the ninjas as she spoke, so how are we gonna take out Naruto she asked them. The ones that didn't know of Saren's A, B, I, L, I, T, I, E, S, Z and Sakura, thought that Sasuke Saren placed her under a very strong force. Yuhiko Naruto muttered. Alright I'm gonna have to knock her out and find a way to escape this place, but knowing Z and his speed that would be very hard. Saren fell on her knees while gripping the ground and breathing hard. Yuhiko immediately stood in front of her while sending a glare towards Naruto. Naruto summoned 10 shadow clones, 9 started to attack the group of enemy ninjas, while the other one brought out some white bandages from Naruto's cloak. The clone carefully wrapped Naruto's arm fully with the bandages. Naruto felt all the clones that were fighting disperse. Eyes look at him, he probably won't be able to fight with one arm, why are we still fighting him Mina asked. Our mission objective right now is to take the necklace from him, so it won't end up in the wrong hand Sasu calmly replied, while sending worried glances at Saren. Well then, if it's the necklace you want then come and get it Naruto started flashing through a series of hand seals at an alarming rate with one hand. Fire release great fire annihilation Naruto yelled, suddenly a huge fire wave headed towards the group of a huge wall of paper surrounded them. Every time one paper burnt another took its position. Everyone watched in amazement as flames kept coming, Naruto was not part Senju and Uzumaki for nothing. Suddenly Yahiko told them to scatter since she wasn't able to hold her anymore or else she would suffer chakra depletion. They all jumped away attaching themselves to the ceiling or the walls. Naruto watched as his fire attempted to burn through the chakra enforced metal wall, but was unable to. Naruto felt a huge amount of chakra appear above him. He decided to play it safe as he activated his Susanoo when he heard, guillotine drop. Above Naruto a black skeleton-like figure appeared absorbing Z's lethal attack. Before Z could jump away a skeleton arm grabbed him and flung him across the room, he smacked into the wall, making a small but noticeable dent. Naruto's vision started to get burly, the pain in his broken arm was starting to get to him. He closed his eyes as he felt waves of kunai and shuriken headed towards him, just when it looked like they were gonna hit him, his eyes snapped open into their form, Indra burst all the shurikens exploded in a burst of chakra. Naruto brought up his sword and passed it through the side of Sakura's body, when she appeared in front of him with her hand forming a fist positioned upwards, Sakura multiple gasps went through the room. Naruto paid them no attention as he was intent on paying Sakura back for what she did to him. He firmed up his grip on the sword and sent a wave of lightning chakra through the sword. Sakura's loud wails of pain was the only thing that was heard through the aircraft. Itch Naruto murmured as he harshly pulled out his sword. Naruto was shocked when a red hand smacked him into a wall. He slowly got up only for the hand to smash him into the ground. Another pair of hands grabbed Naruto and lifted him up, he felt the chakra burning through his Akatsuki cloak, the attacks didn't stop Naruto realized, after two red chakra hands smacked into either side of his face. Naruto's ears started to give a painful ring as he was sent flying through a wall. Naruto slowly got up only to fall to the ground onto one of his knees. He looked around and saw two red chakra fox-like creatures looking at him, each had four tails swinging wildly behind their backs. But the Sura. The Sura suddenly appeared in a white void with the Kaiubi laying down near him. Kaiubi had its eyes closed and a huge smirk on his face, knowing full well that Asura was watching him. Calm down Asura suddenly said. No dot Kaiubi responded, its smirk growing wider. Before Asura could respond, Kaiubi raised up two tails, two. That's how many times I've been sealed before the brat and his sisters. The other two people that I was sealed within hated my guts and kept me chained up like a monster, but the brat Menma treats me like a partner of some sort. So it is my duty as his partner to make sure that he destroys his enemies or anyone who is a threat of his precious people. Asura shook his head as he disappeared. Back with Naruto. Naruto watched Yahiko who dropped to the ground clutching her head as Saren fell unconscious from the amount of killing intent the two raging club ninja were leaking. Sakura's chest was slowly rising up and down as Mina examined her. So that means the two are Mido and Menmanarito concluded. 
He was breathing deeply while feeling his chakra slowly drain, since he was using it to keep the pain at bay. The red chakra skin started to peel off from Mido and Menma as they gained a grip on their rage. Mido fell down on the floor breathing deeply, while Menma slowly stood up from his four-legged position on the floor. Naruto's Sharingan started to spin fast as he realized everyone was still in shock from the power and killing intent Menma and Mido showed. He took some deep breaths as he started to run slowly towards Yuhiko's fallen position on the floor. He felt some bones crack, but he pushed back the pain. As he bent over he picked Yuhiko up with his good arm. He felt Sasuke and Z try to attack him, so he quickly turned his head around, a Madarasu a huge tower of black flames sprouted in front of Z and Sasuke. Naruto felt blood start to trail down his face from his eyes, but he ignored it as he faced the wall near him and used a Madarasu on it, he watched with his Sharingan as the chakra from a Madarasu started to get absorbed by the wall, but then the wall exploded in a burst of black flames. When all the black flames died out due to Naruto running low on chakra, he felt tears start exiting his eyes as the pain invaded him. I got one shot at this he thought as he jumped out of the aircraft through the exit he created. The ninja that were just done with their fight below watched as Naruto and Yuhiko started plunging towards the water. Naruto let go of Yuhiko as they fell towards the water. He whipped some of the blood off of his face with his thumb. He started going through some hand seals but never finished it as he hit the water alongside Yuhiko. Suddenly there was a huge puff of smoke in the water as a huge black hawk-like bird emerged from the water with two figures on its back. Naruto laid on his back with his eyes closed and his good ARM right around Yuhiko's waist. The blood from his face was washed away by the water, but more blood started to leak out from him bandaged wrapped arm. Asura decided to try and lighten the mood as Naruto started to lose consciousness, how did it feel to get your face handed to you? He received no response as Naruto fell asleep on the bird's back. One gigantic bird and two injured brats headed to a Megakura Asura amused to himself.